Rocco, you can't have that cookie, Elmo. Rocco wants to eat it. I have tried to be your friend, but you will not listen to me. So you invited this monster. Don't make me kill somebody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Live at the Waffle Lodge. It is good to see you guys this fine Saturday morning. It's beautiful here in sunny New England. I hope it's nice in your neck of the woods, and if it isn't, we'll hopefully try to make things a little bit better for you. Let's see who we've got in the chat. Uh, first and foremost, of course, because it would not be a day at the Waffle Lodge. It would not be live at the Waffle Lodge without Admiral Wackass. It is good to see you. We've got my brother an official member of the Waffle Lodge, uh, Phil here, Zade Comics. It's good to see you, brother. I hope everything's good in Chicago. We've got D-Wag, Darren Wagner, who is third in absolutely uh, completing that initial uh, trinity of people inside of the chat. It's good to see you, D-Wag. Prater7 is here saying hello and what's up. As always, the great Julie Pascal. It's good to see you uh, regular here at the Waffle Lodge. We will always have a table waiting for you. Uh, Prater 7 is well represented here in the chat saying hello and good morning and all that good stuff. Hail B. Rose. What is up, Black Rose Comics? It is great to see you, my friend. Hail to you and a happy Saturday. Uh, let's see. We've got more D-Wag. We have got my friend and uh, former student in the chat, Bleached Heart, Seth Hart in the chat. It is good to see you, my friend. I hope you are doing well. And uh, yeah, it was when you texted me this morning and we're like, what's up with you? I go, just come on in. Everybody say hello to Bleached Heart for me. We have got all of the people. We have got Eric Weathers, the rock star letterer himself. And Eric, you did an amazing job with the Terror in the Trenches stream and that launch. It's great to see you in here, brother. I hope you're having a great Saturday. Good to see you, my friend. And yeah, everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. So let's get started talking. Um, so I hope everybody's having a great Saturday. I've been working on Nosferro like crazy, checking out a bunch of streams. And it is good to see all of you guys here. We've got Teflon Ron popping in and saying hello. We've got Power Up J-Bot. It is raining people in the chat. It is good to see you. And I mean raining in both ways. Raining, defending. So we got a lot of cool stuff going on right now. And I wanted to, let's see if I can get that in focus. That's a bit of a mess. There we go. Um, we've got a lot of really cool stuff going on. This morning I woke up and was catching up with, um, uh, for canon's sake, I hope that's what it is. The, I always get that title wrong. And I uh, was watching Eric July this morning, and he was talking about some interesting things. He was talking about the parallel economy and creating our own stuff, which is something he's been talking about. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're nice biddies. Um, hey, what's up, Jeremy? How you doing, brother? It's good to see you, man. Um, Jeremy is, of course, my New England brother and uh, one of my favorite people in all of Comics Gate. It's great to see you, my friend. And uh, I love seeing you here, man. It's good to see you. Um, and I was watching uh, Eric July talking, and what was really awesome about it and what was great to see is he was talking about parallel economy. He was talking about building our own stuff, all things that I think 
are so important for us to be doing. But I don't think that um, I don't think anybody is ar as articulate about talking about it as Eric is. He lays out the case. He explains how this stuff works. And he talks about how you have to make your own stuff and make your stuff competitive. You have to create your artwork to be competitive. And, you and that's the game that he's in. He was obviously talking about the trailer for um, the Daily Wire movie that's going to be starring Gina Carano in it. And we'll see how things go with that. But I think that, you know, the main thing is, is that people are starting to step up and they're starting to put their work out there and make things happen. And I think that's one of the things that I, I was thinking about when I was working on Nosfero this morning and late into uh, last night, I was thinking about the whole idea that when you take your resources away from people who don't like you and don't have any interest in what you're doing and something that a point that Eric, I think was hammering home incredibly well is that when you take your resources elsewhere, that is the greatest thing you can do, but you have to have an elsewhere to take your stuff too. And that's one of the things that we have been doing and we know all too well and is a huge part of, of why we're doing what we're doing. But it is amazing that when we back these campaigns, how much a little money from each and every one of us intimidates them when they see it all together and they see the influence and the impact we have. I think that more often than not, we don't see the impact we're having. And that's something that we would do well to really have faith in and take a look at the evidence. Look at what we have been able to do in crowdfunding. When you guys back a creator who doesn't hate you and back a creator, and thank you for all of your support, let me just say, um, the rewards of doing that are bigger than, you know, I think any of us realize from time to time. And I say that as someone who's been backing, you know, obviously my share of campaigns. So Eric July has definitely been on my mind uh, this morning. And, and I've been watching actually recently, <clears throat> excuse me, became a channel member. Of, of his channel so that I could watch the full live streams of his for Canon's sake. And, you know, it's, it's well worth it. It's not a lot of money a month uh, and it's, it's, you know, worth having. And that's the thing for me is, is that it, it keeps me up to date in terms of what he's talking about and how well he sort of lays everything out and structures it. So that's one thing I'm thinking about, but I also got a bit of really exciting, cool news via my uh, my other brother from another mother. I've got many of those guys. I'm a very, very lucky guy. My brother is runneth over, um, which was um, Gabe El Taib had uh, Narwhal on his stream recently. I don't know if any of you guys caught that stream, but uh, he did an interview with Narwhal, and I learned a lot of really cool stuff about Narwhal I didn't know. But the biggest thing um, I somehow had slipped through my radar is that Narwhal is going to be releasing an adaptation, launching an adaptation this coming Thursday. <clears throat> My goodness, you'd think I partied harder uh, than I do for all of the, <laughs> all of the coughing. Um, but he's going to be launching an adaptation he's been working on, for those of you guys who know, um, the full book adaptation of Nosferatu, one of my favorite movies of all time. He's going to be launching that on Indiegogo. And so they were talking a little bit of, about that. I love that movie. I'm a little bit, uh, I don't want to say I'm picky about it, but I see a lot of people try to do things with it. And I was blown away by the artwork that Narwhal showed on that stream. And uh, all this is a long way of saying that I, I started, uh, you know, I was talking to him in the uh, Comics Gate Live green room and, uh, and saying, wow, I'm so excited about this project. He reached out to me and uh, I'm going to be having him uh, on my stream, which is the plan this Wednesday. He's going to be coming on my stream at uh, 1230, I think it is, but I will let you guys know. Uh, 1230 Eastern time. So right after Gabe and I do uh, double impact, I'm going to be doing a stream with Narwhal talking about Nosferatu and all of the cool stuff that we like and the launch of that. I mean, it's some crazy, crazy stuff. Um, let me see here. Yeah. Before you know it, Teflon Ron says, before you know it, we'll be crowdfunding a movie. There's no doubt about it. That is absolutely happening. We have got, um, yeah, I saw that about Narwhal. I didn't know that until I saw that stream. Yeah, neither did I, man. It was cool stuff to see. Hello, Max. How you doing? Yo, everybody, good morning, and good morning to you. Stephen Rockwood drawing. Hey, man, good to see you. Good morning. What a great thing to wake up to. Are you talking about you? Because it is a great thing to wake up to Stephen Rockwood in the morning when your streams, hanging out in the chat, saying hello, and uh, what could be finer, what could be better. So I started seeing this stuff, and I had this realization as I've been watching you know, Eric July, and I've been watching a lot of CG streams right now. The best thing for me about it, something that's been really big, um, 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, just got my EB one plus two. Oh yeah. Earthbound one and two. I'm waiting for mine. I can't wait to get them. Had a Nosferatu teaser poster in it. Oh my gosh. They delivered it to the wrong address. Had to grab it off some old lady down the street. Maybe she ordered it. You know, you could have robbed her. You don't know. Um, you know, you never know. Uh, and, and so this is the thing for me is that I was sitting there after I had these, these conversations just back and forth with, with Narwhal about Nosferatu, which I'm so excited about that project. And then I was thinking about what I was listening to and hearing from Eric July. Um, and I thought, I'm actually around a bunch of people who I have things in common with and that we have shared passions. We work hard. We're productive and we produce things. We don't just complain about culture. We produce things. And that was the thing that Eric had me thinking about and something I want to talk a little bit with you guys about today, which is there are all these projects that are, are copyright free. All these great things. Terror in the Trenches is a perfect example of that. Nosferatu is a perfect example of that. We have a cultural heritage that goes back to the Greeks, the Western canon, that isn't copywritten, that we can do things with. And so why are we trying to, to fool around with and trying to voice our anger at all these properties that are being driven into the ground one at a time by people who don't care about them and, and going up to them like Oliver, you know, <laughs> and Oliver Twist going, please, sir. Can we please have some more fan service? It's ridiculous. And I think we need to get out of that habit. And I've really been thinking a lot about how, you know, uh, in my own life and in my own stuff, I'm learning how to disconnect from a lot of that stuff. It's just, it's over. It's, I can enjoy it for what it is. But if I want to get a true interpretation of Lord of the Rings or something like that, I can go pick up the book until they, uh, you know, until they make it impossible for me to get, which they haven't done yet. So, I mean, same thing with movies. Buy Blu-rays. Do not wait for them to take your stuff away. Hold on to those memories, but trust that the new stuff is going to warp the old stuff. We've got the dying days of YouTube, who did one of the greatest things for me in all of Comicsgate, man. Your Hogan the Bogan video on No Sparrow was amazing. Anybody not subscribed to the dying days of YouTube in this chat, I want to see that number move, people. I don't care if it just moves by one. If anybody in the chat is not subscribed to the Dying Days of YouTube channel, go over there right now and subscribe so we can show him uh, that we appreciate everything that he's doing. Uh, great work. Yeah, all dope stuff going through for now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, hail Dying Days. Don't forget to hit the like button. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Hit that like button. It matters. Share the link, um, and uh, we will get where we need to be getting to. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, an amazing, it's an amazing thing to me to see – all of this stuff happening and then realizing how much blood, sweat and tears in the best sense that we're doing. So right now I don't have um, a budget to do a multi million dollar movie, obviously. Um, but I do have the budget to do a comic book where I build a medieval village and have that village destroyed by a vampire. I can do Epic in paint on a comparative shoestring for a movie. And that is what it's all about. I don't have any censorship. I don't have any things that I have to deal with and any things I have to overcome. And that is important. What is up? And happy Saturday to you, John. It's good to see you, my friend. Absolutely, man. Um, and it's, it's, it's something that I think that um, if I were to sit down and think about where I was a year ago, it really is this big question, or it really is the, the, the reality of it is, is figuring out what it is, where you can contribute, where your skills are, and what resources you can bring. And it's always going to be, you know, obviously an element of backing books and also, um, you know, making sure the way you guys show up for streams and everything like that. But then there's the other aspect of it, right, which is actually putting, you know, the time and the effort and the work into painting and making interesting YouTube content so that we can point this stuff out. If there's, this is the thing I was feeling for so many years before I found really going back to the early days of the fandom menace and obviously the early days of comics gate um, in terms of the publishing end of it, for sure. Um, the thing that I sort of felt was there was so much media that was making me, you know, it wasn't making me crazy. You don't have to push that hard, but <laughs> there was so much media out there that was, you know, about the narrative. This is what it is. People like this movie. People love the last Jedi. People love the force awakens. Those old star Wars movies were terrible. And, you, you know, you're just like, what? No, this this new stuff is, is shit. I don't like this new stuff. And then you find all these people out there who see everything that you're seeing that you're not hearing anywhere else. And it is like oxygen. 
And so when people say to themselves in their head, like, there's no comics out there, there are no comics out there I can buy that are doing what comics I know comics can do. Is there anything better than seeing those comics get made? And they are getting made. I love the panel of the guy pointing the composition colors use. Thank you so much, Prater7. I appreciate that. That is, we are going full-blown, you know, epic Conan, kick-ass, vampires, warriors, creatures, monsters, everything that we love is going to be in this book. And that's what I love about it. But I'm telling you, I would be lying if I didn't say that seeing all of the incredible books, whether it's Battle Brick Road, whether it's Terror in the Trenches, whether it is the Lost Pages, whether it is Nosferatu, whether it's Earthbound, whether it's Cyberfrog, whether it's any one of these books that are out there right now and that are, are either funding or launching or you can get in demand, then we would, oh, backer three, number 322 on Nosfero. Eric Weathers, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Wow, what a, what a segue. You guys, are, you guys are killing me, man. What a good group of people. Um, but this is the thing I keep thinking about, right? Is that when we create this stuff and when we hail hey, Eric Weathers, man, you're awesome. Um, and hardest working man, seriously, hardest working man in show business as far as comics gates concerned, honest to God, what an amazing dude. Um, but this is the thing. Hey, what's up, Eric DeGuapo? Again, good to see you and showing love for Eric Weathers. But this is the thing I started thinking about, right? If we've got the skills, we have the ability as we start to explain to people with the actual ability, with the actual skills, and with the actual financial resources. To quote Eric July, they need our money to fund their bullshit. We do not need their bullshit to fund our lives or to enjoy our lives. Once they realize that, um, you are the James Brown, Brown, Brown <laughs> James Brown of CG. Uh, I feel good. Um, and, uh, he's living in America folks. And I saw James Brown live actually, uh, at the Riverbend festival in Chattanooga, Tennessee as a kid. So, uh, I know me some James Brown. Um, but this is the thing, you know, when we look at this stuff, rockstar letterer, that's right. Um, but if I hope you like vulgarity, yeah, that's right. Um, but this is the thing about it, right? When I look at this stuff and I see the work that we're doing, hello to you, my friend, it's good. Happy Saturday. Um, but when I look at the stuff that we're doing and I look at the way the, the, the work is coming together is we need to remember, and I'm going to try to watch my profanity, to be honest with you. Um, I know, you know, it's a general thing, but I've just been saying, I just don't want to put that in people's ears first thing in the morning. You know, it's uh, not till five o'clock at least, but this is the thing that I don't think that most of us realize. I feel like it's that sw scene in the movie with uh, called swingers with uh, uh, Vince Vaughn talking to um, uh, John Favreau, where he goes, you're like a bear, man, with these big claws. And you're looking at this bunny and you're like going, what do I do with these claws? I've got this bunny in front of me. You're just batting it around and you're like going, you know, you're not hurting it, but you're like with these claws. What do I do with these claws? You're a bear, man. And that's what I think about. I think about the idea that um, you've got all of these people who are um, who who are are lions man they are lions that have been caged and they've got us thinking they've got a bunch of lions thinking that we need the cage to be happy and that's the most ridiculous thing in the world that it's the cage that's keeping us safe when in reality it's the cage that's keeping them safe if that makes sense and i think that it's really great um for them when they can take our talent when they can take our skill and they can regulate it they can restrain it they can control it through bureaucratic means and it works out great for them and they say to us they convince us you know our creative uh, jailers so to speak that we need them and not it's not that true that's not true it's the other way around when we leave when someone says to me hey everything that you do and i know i walk the walk i did this as recently as this past year Someone says, hey, you know what? You're the problem. Things like the, what you guys do and what you guys think, men are the problem, whatever it is, whatever the BS is of it. When people say that kind of stuff, it's like, okay, cool. Well, then I'll leave. Good luck. Make it happen without me if you think that's the case. And it's the funniest thing about it where you start looking around really quickly and you go, wait a second, all the people with skill and motivation are all over here working. It's, it's completely insane. They're all over here doing things. They're all over here, you know, actually making 
things productive? Why are they, um, why are they the ones carrying all of the weight of it and all the ones who are getting the critiques? And it's, it's a very strange thing, man. It's a very strange thing. They want to cage Max. Yeah, they do. Um, I feel an era of independent creators coming. Absolutely. A renaissance from bleached heart, a renaissance of badassery. Once we break the cage, they'll be running scared. Absolutely. They will be. They absolutely will be. Eric Guapo, when they uh, can't control the workforce, they become irrelevant. You're absolutely right, guys. And this is the thing, too. This is the thing. When you're looking at Nosfero, I have a very specific responsibility. So let me talk about um, my responsibility with this. And then I want to get on to talking a little bit about um, a little bit about Narwhal and a little bit about uh, his his adaptation of Nosferatu, which I think is going to be absolutely brilliant. I'm excited uh, to see it. Uh, does that paint ever give off fumes? No, it does not. Um, and it's, it's a blessing that it doesn't. Um, <laughs> thank goodness. Um, but this is the thing too, for me. And that's right. Absolutely. Eroding faith in them, starving for oxygen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. And John is caught up, but this is, this is the thing I want to say is that my job is a very simple one. My job is, it, and it's made easier by having comics gate, by having people who are invested in really putting their money where their mouth is and investing in independent entertainment. But my job is to make a great comic book for you guys to make something that when you get it, it is worth the money that you put into it. And it is a very simple job and it's the same job that they supposedly have and should have. And what they tell you is, is that their job is to put something in front of you and then convince you why you should like it without caring what you make of it. And that is a very, um, there's a lot of disdain in that approach to doing things. So I can do Epic, you know, with a paintbrush and make this stuff happen. I don't need their permission to do it. I've been talking to people about art and around people talking about art and I love it. And I've never had trouble um, being talking passionately about the things I believe in. And all of you guys are probably the same way. And that's something that people who have never really believed in the things they're saying, they've only ever feared the, the convictions and the integrity of other people. They can't relate to that. It scares the heck out of them. And they should be scared because if they can't compete with it, that's it. People vote with their wallets and that's what it's all about. Um, let me see here. <laughs> that background reminds me of flan. Why did you have to bring up flan this early in the morning? Now I'm hungry. It always goes to food. Um, let me see here. Uh, yes, the internet is to disrupt the established institutions by eroding faith in them and starve them of oxygen from, um, refugee. Yeah. Refugees escape, um, escapism spaces or refuges. Sorry. Escape uh, places. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Everybody's saying hello. You see, look at this guys. You know, I mean, it's, it's not, uh, it's not one of Bancroft streams in terms of uh, where everybody knows your name, but we're getting there. You know, you got to follow the lead of the big dog, man. He's, he's awesome. Uh, Frog G, hail to you, my friend. It's good to see you this fine morning. Happy Saturday to everybody. You know, it's it's gonna it'll be a little less, um, you know, fire and brimstone. You only have one job, Sean. One job. You're absolutely right. Um, <laughs> wow, kills me, man. You guys crack me up. It's great to have you guys here on a Saturday, man. It's good to get some laughs in under our belt. That's why it's all about waffles too. At the end of the day. This morning I woke up and I'd, I'd gotten, uh, for me, I got a lot of sleep yesterday, which is weird. I'm one of those people that where when I get a good night's sleep, it's great. I feel rested, but I also feel like someone stole some of my life. <laughs> feel confused because I'm not used to getting a lot of sleep. And so I woke up this morning uh, and I was like hungry because I hadn't eaten in, I don't know, a little while. Now it wasn't, let's be clear. You know, it's not like I was starving as I say. Um, but I woke up this morning and I was like, I feel like having like microwave and some chicken and having some chicken. And I got so close to having chicken and waffles. You don't even know. But I was like, look, we can't be, you can't start the day off that high and then go and try to make artwork because it's never going to live up to chicken and waffles, folks. It absolutely is about the waffle lodge. Yeah. People, people, um, my biggest metric for people in terms of, um, you know, mental health is, can they laugh? That's a huge factor for me. Can they laugh? Can they laugh at things? Are they able to talk about anything not political? And it's it's very strange because creativity is almost largely not political. It's the antithesis of it. Yeah, sleep hygiene is important. It's true. I fell asleep with a chicken leg in my mouth, went right out so I could just eat when I woke up. Is that good hygiene, John? I'm not sure. Let me know. Hey, hey Ibex Universe, good to see you. Hail all. Good morning, Shant and chat. Good morning to you, Ibex Universe. It's good to have you in here. 
Uh, I feel like we've got all the usual suspects in here, and I appreciate it, guys. You guys are awesome. And again, thank you, Eric DeGuapo, for backing uh, Nosfero, man. I really do appreciate it. Um, thank you to everybody who, who comes into these streams. I had a really fun time. I love seeing good things happen for good to good people. And it's been really cool to watch, um, you know, what happened with terror in the trenches and what has happened with, um, oh God, yeah, it sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it gives me the itis. I fall asleep quick. Yeah, the Thanksgiving uh, coma, right, is what it's about. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, let me see here. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, morning to you, Jordan. Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, it's it's one of those things to where um, I love seeing somebody work hard and put together a beautiful project like Terror in the Trenches and then see like-minded people free of resentment, fellow artists, and resentment is the drug drug of these crazy you know cultural vandals is resentment of other people's skill and ability to see people come together to me it's a very natural thing to support other people when you think their stuff is good it's not because oh they think like me oh they we, we're all in lockstep about things except for the fact that creativity and quality and all that other stuff you know making great work um and all of that um and i don't even think about that stuff but what's shocking is is one how supportive everybody in Comicsgate is uh, when it comes to seeing quality work that backers back books based on quality, not based on legacy brands. Um, and you know what the political, I mean, not sure there's always going to be an element of that. Um, but it's, it's not the motivating factor. So to see people come out for tear in the trenches and I want to take a look at that guys, hang on a second. I want to take a look at this. I don't do this very often on my streams because I'm a boomer idiot, not because I have some moral compass about it or anything like that or any opinion. Uh, it's just straight up a uh, pocket full of dumb that I've got going on here, but let me just see if I can uh, do this here. Share screen, moving at the speed of stop here. Apologies. Share. There we go. Now it's ready to show. Let's take a look at this, guys. Let's take a look at this. I want to put this on the stream here. This is Terror in the Trenches, okay? This is a beautiful book, a beautifully illustrated book. Um, and Von Klaus is just killing it on this. And I just want to show you guys what we have, those of us who are outside of that cage of creative, creative stagnation and corporate creativity have. It's Bruce Tim on steroids. It's funny. I will tell you this. Um, I love that as a descriptor, but I really feel as though this work is starting to become something that goes even beyond that. It's almost like it's the next step of the stuff Bruce Tim was influenced by. Look at these great T-shirts. You know, if they're going to be afraid of certain symbols, all right, we'll pick them up. We'll take them. It's not like you have a copyright on a skull anyway. Lord knows. Look at Nosferro's uh, chest. He's got his uh, Thulu uh, skull. So I'll keep doing it until uh, we can't do it anymore. Look at this stuff, guys. This is some beautiful, beautiful work. Look at this. This is us. This is funded by us. This is funded by free people around the world and across this country to make great work. Are, how does that? Are you guys excited this Saturday? I'm excited. I really am. I'm sorry if I'm I'm in full cheerleader mode, but I I blame other YouTubers. I blame them and I blame, I blame the crack pack um, <laughs> for all the enthusiasm. Uh Oh, things are selling out. That's how it goes. Look at how amazingly cool this is. Get out of town. Um, we had the conversations. Uh, we've had a few conversations about can American comics compete with manga to me, this, the answer that I see with books like this books like tiger blue is yes, we absolutely can compete. How cool is this stuff? Look at that throne. This is everything I love about the Phantom. This is everything I love about Pulp, to quote Razor Fist, you know, embrace Pulp, to quote Phil, to quote all of us who are doing this stuff. Look at how great this is going. This is beautiful work, and let us check out that total. Sorry if anybody's getting motion sick from my quick scrolling here, but it do what it do, as so many of you have taught me. 375 backers with 28 days left in the first 30 days, if I'm not mistaken. And we have got uh, 24K. We're, we're almost to 25K on this thing. And that is that is a testament to the hard work, the long hours and time that Von Klaus has put in CG, 
And this isn't his first rodeo. So there is, you know, a lot of trust for this project, but any way we can promote this project guys, um, it's gotta be done. It's gotta be done. So I just want to say congratulations to him and congratulations on this project. Cause it's beautiful. It, it's, I cannot wait to get that project. I mean, I can wait cause it's a crowdfunder, but I can't wait to get it. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, let's, let's take a look at this. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I love the art of Terror in the Trenches. I think it's some of the nicest art I've seen. It's it's incredible work. It's immaculate work. Yeah, resentment is a secondary emotion. Yeah, resentment is drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. So let's not let's not get in the way of people drinking poison if that's what they're you know if that's what they're gonna pray to. Hell yeah, art on that is really good. Absolutely, and I feel like everybody because there is so much quality. And so many brilliant ideas that is that are that are happening in Comicsgate right now and in this creative community, this this parallel economy, this this um, area where artists who have, have we haven't been kicked out. Increasingly, we have left. You know what I mean? I, I love when um, when Ethan said he feels like he got kicked out of a burning building. That's absolutely right. It's like, well, OK, thanks. Thanks for kicking me out of that burning building. Um, but in my case, I left. I said, I don't want to do this shit anymore. Sorry, gosh, I'm working on myself, guys. I don't want to do this stuff anymore. I don't want to keep rowing um, with, uh, in, a, in a ship that I don't like where it's going. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Gigavox. Uh, give up, Gigavox. I can never get that right. I'm working on it. I love that art style, too. You're absolutely right, Max said. Uh, hey, bros. Yo, John, absolutely. Immaculate energy and expression. Absolutely. If that doesn't get you excited, he'll crack back. If that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what does. John, I'm here just still a bit sleepy. Listen, you are welcome to gingerly wake up here at the uh, at the Waffle Lodge. I know a lot of you guys, I come in to turn on the lights, fire up the grill here at the Waffle Lodge, and a lot of you guys were already here, passed out. Passed out in the booth, and that's okay. We love you here, all right? So you can, you can be half asleep in your plate of waffles. Don't worry. The, the smell of that coffee is going to wake you up, and you're going to be feeling good, you know? Absolutely. Wow. I knew B Rose was going to come in here. Listen, you cannot, you can take the boy out of the Weebery, but you can't take the Weebery out of the boy. That's the way it is. That's how it's always going to be. Uh, that's right. Bow indeed. Hello, Admiral Wackass. Absolutely. Uh, Black Rose Comics. And, and look at all this, guys. This is, we're actually making things. We are creating an amazing place to make work. I heard nothing but good things about Monster MD. I would second that. I have too. And then they came out with something this this cool. Vaughn and Monica are a great team. Yeah, Monica, if you guys don't know this, uh, that she is a, uh, a typical white male. Um, uh, when I see art like that, it makes me just want to bring my A-game even more to what I am doing. Hey, what's up, Scottsley? It is good to see you. Hail and good morning to you. And yes, hail to the chat. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the <laughs> got the Saturday morning booth, <laughs> booth, booze, blues. Absolutely, John. Can we make some shirts of that? I think we need shirts of that. Yeah, exactly. B Rose is always watching when the subject of Weebry comes up. Uh, John is there. Yeah, look at the love. Uh, Sean, accept my kind. <laughs> exactly. Hey, listen, I have. I've got, I, I don't, I hate to tell you guys this, but, uh, yeah, I'm. I we're we're a blended family. We're a mixed family. We have got some Weebery uh, in this next generation that's coming up, and uh, I support it. I support if if that's listen. You got to love your kids. You got to support them. But I'll be damned if they are woke or SJW. That much I can tell you. Um, there's always a nice place to sleep on the lawn if that's the case. Uh, I'm a whack ass. You passed out on my gumball, uh, my gumball head and pizza delivery last night. There you go. That's how it is, man. So this is the thing about it. When I look at projects like that, it's great. Now let's do this because I'm on a tear right now. Um, and, and I really wish that there was more promotional artwork on the signup page for uh, Nosferatu by uh, our man here. Um, is this real? Hang on a second here. What? This isn't. What in the Sam Hill? Hang on a second here. Edit. Oh, what, what am I doing? I'm such an idiot. Uh, eBay. Oh, guys. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right hang on a second i'm getting this here wait till i i log out you know and I, I kick myself out of my stream that's when you guys are gonna know the boomerang has hit a new level but this is something i need to talk about here right guys let's let's take it down a notch here let's just lower things down for a second here i've got some people i see in the chat i can't wait to say hello to but i gotta focus on this we gotta focus on tiger blue right now okay 
Tiger Blue is an amazing looking project. It is a beautiful project. As an artist, it inspires me. As an artist, I look at it and I think this is how we are going to move things forward and broaden our audience. It's the same thing with Terror in the Trenches. But I have to ask this question. I have to ask this question right now as I look at this project. How are we not to 10K yet? How is this not, a, as I love to say, my new phrase for this is, how is this not a five-figure young lad? We need to get this to five figures. It cannot be. I thought it was already at five figures. It cannot just be at 9805. Can we get this? Let's I bet I guess it would help if I showed it and stopped running my dumb mouth, but let's do it. Let's do it here. I want I want us to see this number and ask ourselves this question. Why? Why is this project not at 10k? So let's take a look. Let let's talk about why it should be for a second with this artwork. Who has not backed this project yet in our chat and who would want to back it now that they're seeing it? Give this a think. But this is beautiful work. This is stunning work. And I want to see this project move. I want to see this hit 10K. I need to see this hit 10K. This is how, how RGB retro graphic books. I love established 2018 Free, made with liberty in the U.S. of A. Look at this stuff, guys. If if you're not blown away, I don't. It may maybe it's not some people's cup of tea when they see my work, painted gouache work. Maybe it's not somebody's cup of tea when they see Narwhal's work, or even Jose Garcia's work. But you cannot deny the quality of it. And for me, I like it. I really enjoyed. Get on this, people. Look at this. That is visual and artistic mastery right there, what you're seeing in that shot. Look at the depth of field. Look at the foreground, middle ground, and background. Look at the immaculate reality and world building that's happening in there. If we can't get this project to 10K, we need to make sure we're reaching out and showing it to everybody we can show it to. Twitter, just get the word out about Tiger Blue because this should be at 10K. This, this is a campaign that's got to be a five figures young lad. There's no getting around it. I mean, the action is great. There has got to be a bigger audience for this project. And that, that audience does it, is, I will tell you this right now, that audience is not engaged in the culture war except for tangentially. They're not thinking about all this stuff. They're looking for cool things. And the rule of cool, as my man Bancroft often states, and he is an evangelist for, should carry over into this campaign. Look at that. If that isn't cool to you, at the very least... Check your pulse. Check your pulse. And I will tell you this, this cover, this video game cover right here for this project, when I saw that artwork posted on Twitter, oh my gosh, look at this artwork. This is stunning stuff. As a painter, as an artist, um, that blows my mind. I would love to have a poster of this. Look at this stuff, guys. Look at how cool this is. If, I mean, I am excited to get up in the morning and make artwork every single day. Some might say every day because I'm making artwork shoulder to shoulder with some of the best backers that you're going to find, some of the best support, some of the best customers you're ever going to find in entertainment. And I'm working alongside some of the most incredible creators and who are free, customers who are free and creators who are free. And that's what I see when I look at this stuff. Let me catch up with the chat, guys. I've been rambling. I apologize. Let's see what we got here. We got chicken and waffles. Of course, we were bringing that up. Uh, sometimes I'm spot on. You never know. Good morning, Jordan. Good. So just catching up here. Uh, yeah. Hail Eric the Guapo uh, of Ibex and Ibex Universe. Let's see where we were. Yeah. Love the team on Terror in the Trenches. We did that one. Yeah. Hell yeah. On um, Art on that is real good. Immaculate energy. Absolutely. Hail Bleached Heart. It's good to see you here, my friend. Crack Pack Harry Day. Uh, let's see here. Bow indeed. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the weavery. It's right. Listen, it takes all kinds, folks. It takes all kinds and not all similar minds, which is the best thing about us. Um, yeah, hail everyone. Multitasking indeed. Um, being kicked out versus leaving a noticeable void. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I heard um, leaves a noticeable void. You're absolutely right. I heard nothing but good things about Monster MD. Yes, we went over that one. Froggy G is here. Absolutely. 
Um, get the Saturday morning booth boot blues. Yeah, booze. <laughs> you guys are just giving me tongue twisters to throw me off, man. Oh, it's hilarious. Uh, mixed family is a strong family. Absolutely. I am uh, I'm uh, one fourth Austrian, half Indian, and uh, also Puerto Rican. And uh, I love it, guys. And I'm I love every kind of artwork that's good. If you look at my bookshelf, you're going to see Bon Dessine, Franco Belgium comics. You're going to see some manga mixed in there as well. You're going to see Berserk. You're going to see Nausicaa. You're going to see, I'm trying to think of what else I have over there. I've got a bunch of different stuff. Oh gosh, the Lovecraft adaptation, which if you haven't seen that manga and you like Lovecraft, I wanted to make sure I said Buffalo Khan, good morning. And it's great to see you on this Saturday. I wanted to make sure I, I saw you there because when new people come in, I'm always trying to keep my, my eye open for you. Um, yeah, need to hop. All right, Frog G, take care and we will see you later, my friend. Um, but this is the thing about it, right? Boomer before your time. Absolutely. Not even kidding. Joe Ball is exceptional. You're absolutely right. Tiger Blue is crazy dope. Yes. 10K, it's got to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Put that uh, link in the chat. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is why I've got to stay up to date on the chat. Hang on a second. Put that link in the chat. We are going to do that because I'm an idiot and I need to make sure I do that. Here we go. I'm thinking of that song, So Sweet to Be an Idiot. Um, I'm definitely living in that space right now. All right, so there we go, guys. We got that in the chat. So, yeah, let's make sure we do it. The art looks great. Jose is a beast. Yeah, Jose is, you know, absolutely incredible. Um, but, pl yeah, plus you get an action figure. Absolutely right. And Son of Liberty Radio, it's good to see you, my friend. I might want to make sure I say hello to you as well. John says, just can't get down with Narwhal's typical style. I like Narwhal, though. Hey, listen. Guys, it is about giving people options and making cool stuff. I love Narwhal style. I think, let me just say this, John. I, I'm a big believer in people buy what they want to buy. And you know that. That's what we do here. If, if we do anything else. But regardless of whether you back it or not, I hope you will check out the, the show when I talk to him about it and look at it. Because as someone who is a Nosferatu fanatic, he really is bringing something new. And I don't say that about everybody. I think it's uh, when I see Nosferatu work, sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, guys, it, it doesn't look like you're doing anything new with it. Cause it's a great film. It's a masterpiece. Um, is Tiger Blue not in color? No, it's not. It's a black and white book. They are trying to do um, in a lot of ways, early Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the eighties indie boom with it. And also um, trying to bring that kind of kinetic energy of video game art and eighties work. And, and then also making it something that's uh, contemporary. The th coolest thing about that idea is there's that element of the island of Dr. Moreau in there that I don't think anybody has done with pop quite that way, which is great. Uh, I just woke up with streaming till 2 a.m. Oh, my gosh. Son of Liberty Radio, bless your heart, man. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for being here and starting your day off with us here at the Waffle Lodge. It's good to see you. Um, if Tiger Blue isn't in color, it needs to, um, to be to boost the sales. That's an interesting idea. Teflon Ron, that is a very interesting idea. Um, it's, yeah, I'm going to have to think on that one. I'm going to have to think on that one because there's something I really like about the black and white on it. And then I just keep going back to the early Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issues and manga sales. And I think, how are we not, that is a much bigger audience with a lot, um, even though they're presented as a political uh, hive mind, it's so not. There seems like there's some potential there. Hey, what is up? And I'm going to try to pronounce your name again, right? I always get it wrong. Is it, uh, is it, uh, is it Duarte? Is that how I pronounce it? Or is it, you, you correct me, man, because I'm so tired of getting names mispronounced. I'm going to have to tattoo that on my hand. Um, if unmoved, contact <laughs> cardiologist, something's wrong. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are killing me, man. Devlon, Ron, yeah, absolutely. Too bad it needs to be in color and make it a stretch goal to get it in color. Ooh, that's interesting, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, there is the link for Tiger Blue. Uh, Mod Frog G, while you're at it, I got to get to that at some point. Absolutely. Do art. Yeah, of course. Yeah, do art. How am I not? Do art. It's that simple, people. I've got to get this together. Comic Stock with Pops Van Sant. Shant, what is up, Pops? It's good to see you, my friend. Uh, B Rose, again, disagree with the art. The art is meant to be in black and white. And again, this is the thing, right, guys? We've got Narwhal, who's, and actually Nos, uh, Nosferatu, his Nosferatu. Do art. Yes, that is it. Do art. Do art. There we go. Thank you so much for being here. Um, this is the thing about it for me, uh, is when we're doing, uh, when we're doing artwork, when we're putting this stuff together, I want to be able to go into the online comic shop of my dreams and get a little bit of everything. I like that, 
um, I like that uh, Nosferatu is going to be another book that's in black and white. And I look at that book and I say, well, that it should be in black and white. If you want to see some full color uh, Nosferatu stuff, you've got my book if you want to see it fully painted. And I know that um, there's some Nosferatu showing up in quite a few other books right now in CG because Nosferatu, man, is another one of those characters that is not in is in the public domain. But I've loved that character forever. It never dawned on me to do something with it until CG, until now. I went, I could do this. There's an audience for this here. But um, check out the artwork for that book. And, you know, like I said, it is a total personal taste thing. I, I'm one of those people that it's like, um, <laughs> someone once asked me one time we were out and they were like going, are you getting a drink? Like, you know, an alcoholic beverage. And I was like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not getting a drink. And they're like, can I drink? And I'm like, at what point did it become about you couldn't drink? Cause I wasn't drinking. I don't care. Like, I don't, <laughs> it's like when I go up to somebody and I'm, I'm like, I read comics and they're like, I don't read comics. And I'm like going, well, can I read comics? Like, of course, you know, it's crazy. As a former art teacher, you'd think do art would be easy to remember. Well, I was actually a, a college art professor. So doing art wasn't something that uh, a lot of my colleagues did. So let's see here. Uh, it took me a while to warm to Narwhal style. Seems very expressionist. Yeah, absolutely. It does. It's all about the sweet science of placement. And it's interesting because I was not a big fan to, just to this point. And I know it's very hip to say the stuff is brilliant. I was not a massive fan of Alex Toth stuff when I was younger and when I was in college. And I still don't, I don't have a massive Toth collection. I have like one thing with Toth work in it. That's not a knock. Um, it's just, it's not my, my thing. And Tim Sale's work, while I think it is, is interesting and it has its qualities to it, it I was not a huge fan of that. So I get why people um, don't always respond to stuff like that. But for me, Narwhal is just in this perfect you know, spot for me in terms of me really digging his work. Don't know how to explain it. Um, and it's, uh, it's just, but it, that's what taste is. You know what I mean? That's what taste is. It's like, we all have a, a, a sense of what we like and that's our God given right. Thank goodness. Um, black and white comics are tricky to do. You're right. If it's not done in a style that fits black and white, Bernie Wrightson did black and white. Well, listen, I, <laughs> you're bringing Bernie Wrightson into this conversation. My friend, let me tell you this. You are absolutely right. You will never get an argument out of me when it comes to Bernie Wrightson, but I will say this heartbreaking experience I had is I started looking at some of Bernie Wrightson's full color Swamp Thing paintings. Oh, beautiful. It was bad enough when I knew that he was mopping up the floor with me in black and white, but seeing he mops the floor up with me in every other way, little depressing. Little depressing. About the only thing he doesn't have going for him, and God rest him, was um, um, that he's not still with us. And that is our great loss as a as artists and fans of horror and creatures and monsters. Love it. Love it. John, I think I know what you're laughing at. I thought it was a pretty good joke. The second Wraith of God issue will have a Nosferatu like vampires. It better um, because I've got that first issue and I'm ready to back the second one. I am locked and loaded. Aaron Lepresti, if you are listening, I am ready to back your next book. I think your artwork is breathtaking and uh, you know, you and Shelly have been great and, and really kind and, and supportive and I appreciate it. Yeah, Lepresti is great. Sorry, Duarte. Let me get back to this. I learned to love black and white with the savage sword of Conan. Wow. You guys are dropping all of the stuff that we love, right? Yeah. I, the, Conan was something that um, I didn't get exposed to Conan until I was a little bit older. And that was via Frazetta and my studio mate and brother from another mother, Nick Jane who did some coloring on uh, the shadow and has done a lot of comic coloring actually off and on. In addition to doing Conan book covers, over, he's done one or two of those, I think. Um, he is um, he introduced me to Conan and I think it's an incredibly cool thing to remember where you were when somebody introduced you to Conan the Barbarian. And I mean, outside of the movie, obviously I knew about Conan the movie, but I mean to say like, this is, this is this world. This is Robert E. Howard. That stuff is amazing. That stuff is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Lepresti is great. Um, what got me to back Narwhal is hearing him talk about his thoughts on storytelling. Well, he, he had a pitch for, an aspect of, of Nosferatu that I never even thought of. And I'm a, a Nosferatu maniac. And I heard that pitch and I went, you get this. You bring in some soul and some verve to it. And I know I use that term a lot to describe comics gate work, but I think it's because so much of the artwork I'm seeing everywhere else is so painfully inert. It's just totally stayed. Yeah, that's Wrightson. Yep, you got it. Wrightson, I mean, what are you going to do? In the 80s and the early 90s, I read tons of black and white comics, caliber comics, uh, was an amazing publisher of any comics. Absolutely. And, and I always tell you guys that Tim Vigil's Grips, which was a black and white book, 
was the thing that inspired me to do my first comic book. And I remember not knowing what Zipatone was or any of that stuff. I was a kid and, you know, growing up outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee, in a small uh, little area called Hickson, Tennessee, out in the suburb. And I remember seeing uh, over my friend Zachary Hartford Cullis's house, I saw um, Grips. His brother introduced me to his older brother and him had Grips. And they're like, look at this. Get on this. Check out Grips. And I didn't know what Zipatone was. And uh, I had seen it in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But I love the textural quality of Zipatone. And I know you can use screen tone digitally, but I need that. And that's the thing about it. You know, when I was showing people the other day on stream, uh, those of you guys who back at the art book level of which there are many, and I thank you. Um, it's now only an add on that tier is gone, but I was showing the books, the quality of books that you're going to get when you back my projects. These are going to be square bound eight and a half by 11. These are oversized. These are my, my copies that uh, have been, been in the wars a bit but you are going to get beautifully reproduced painted work. You are going to see comic book artwork and fantasy worlds that I want to inspire you. Here's my love of boxing. There's my, my Deontay Wilder reference for the day, but I've been doing this stuff and making this work because I love it so much. I love comics. I love hammer horror. I eat and breathe sleep this stuff i love monsters and werewolves and creatures and i want to make stuff that gets you guys excited gets your blood pumping gets you saying i need to get this work i want to play around with things like gold paint and silver paint and make these crazy epic paintings of creatures and that is what it's about for me and sometimes i'll do a black white and silver Sometimes I will go absolutely psycho on the detail more often than not, especially since I got these reading glasses. I also want to say hail to John Malin for getting some reading glasses. He's now going to learn the horror of realizing how badly you couldn't see before and how, um, yeah, how it changes everything, you know, <laughs> when you get your glasses. I did the cyber frog piece that Ethan uh, commissioned me to do before I got glasses and I had to email him back and go, can I, uh, can I redo that and send it to you? And then I did the same thing for the dang, uh, shoot the uh visions book with the lily swimsuit issue because i had to contact mark polton and i said mark can i uh can i send that back to you again this is a little bit of a fun star trek reference here um and then yeah love doing stuff like this there's always this little sentimental aspect to the stuff i do because i i love people and i love i love beautiful ladies and uh people in love and i think it's great and so i will always always try to bring that that elegant sort of fury to my stuff. That's what I'm really going for. Like this actually inspires me on the painting I'm working on right now, which is, you know, the fiery sort of quality of it. Oh, and it's funny. Um, even though this is not so completely inorganic, here's the, uh, here's a jet Jaguar Godzilla piece that I did for that book, which I had a ton. Yeah. Be care careful about progressive lenses because they make everything squash sideways. It's totally true. It's absolutely true. And I have to take my glasses off every now and again to look at my work and I go, no one's going to see that detail. Like, that just went nuts. Uh, there you go, right there. There's another painting right there. And, uh, you know, you know what we paint. Um, same thing here. Love uh, Komodo dragons. I mean, I don't want to meet one, but I do love their work. Uh, the, I love their aesthetic, not their work. Their work is terrifying. Um, more adventure stuff. Um, there's always a little bit of a making of sequence in the back of my books. If you've ever uh, backed one of my books previously, this is the the finished painting of the logo that so many of you guys know and associates with uh, Jonathan Jetty art. And of course I showed this painting the other day and here's the, uh, the back of my books. There's often a making of section it shows my paints, shows the materials I use, talks about what I do, shows the, the process from sketch as it goes to finish and how all that stuff progresses because I want to give people a little bit extra when they back my books. Do you know what I mean? Listen, Gamma is going to come. Eric Weathers, I promise you Gamma is going to come. I've got, I've got friends who are, and I'm not going to play that Trump video that I made. Uh, that's it's Ethan. So he gets to have it, but yeah, it is, it is. So I, I love these characters. I'm going to do, um, I don't know if you saw this Eric or not, but, um, and for people in the chat who've been catching the streams, but I'll see if I can find it real quick. But, um, if I paint any kaiju and things going forward, I'm pretty much exclusively doing a lot of CG stuff right now. So this was my first kind of trying to figure out, I don't, I'm not really happy with it, but this was my first, um, 
Oh, <laughs> I meant Scarecrow. There you go. Hold on a second. Let me get you on screen here. I meant Scarecrow. There you go. Um, but this was one of the things to where, um, hey, what's up, Matthew Fowler? It is great to see you, my friend. We were singing your praises. Yeah, Biolante. Gotta love Biolante. But this, if I'm going to draw or paint ca kaiju characters, they're either going to be my own, they're going to be, um, or they're going to be kaiju characters that are that are in CG. And thankfully, Shane Davis is making that increasingly a possibility. And so, yeah, this right here is a, let me adjust the light so it's not doing that. Hopefully it's doing that flicker thing a little bit less. Um, but yeah, this is the uh, painting I'm doing that's influenced by my love of boxing and influenced by my love of the stuff that Shane Davis and Yonzi are doing. Um, but yeah, I, I love monsters and there's going to be a, a plethora of monsters, as they said in uh, Three Amigos. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I want to just make sure I come back to this one. Yeah, those Conan magazines are awesome. Yeah, some of those pulps that Phil Diaz and us have been uh, been doing more. 499 was enough for me to never back anything that Narwhal or Zach does. That bait and switch with the colors was extremely unprofessional. Hey, listen, you know, it's it's you know how it is, guys, is that when when you put stuff out there, the audience and, you know, has to be happy with the product. And and if not, then you're going to have to earn, you know, their their support back. And, and I can understand that. Um, I actually didn't back four ninety nine, So I didn't really have that ex that experience with it, per se. But um, so I, I can't relate to that exact thing. So but I did hear about that. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Oh, uh, man, Zipatone burns OMAC miniseries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Zipatone is awesome. So is, uh, oh my gosh, what is that paper called? Uh, Graphics Duo Shade, which they use for Ninja Turtles. Absolutely. Cheers to you, Admiral Wackass. Um, Eric Guapo, I hate it, but true. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there you have it. Yeah. Um, uh, these are nostalgic. Yes, you know these books well. And you've seen this artwork in person. Wow, I need that book, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we moved it and had it as an add-on. Because actually, you can thank Phil Diaz for that. Because Phil said um to me he goes i want to buy the head sketch the the i guess the 75 dollar tier i'm trying to remember how much it is for the head sketch um ink inside of the book and i also want to add those on and i had not really thought about that is the majority of your work of organic things any machines um or the like actually it's funny the majority of my work is organic stuff right now it's creatures it's creepier things um but it's um yeah, that's, a, I want to do uh, more inorganic stuff. And I have done that in the past, obviously. So the one I want to do is uh, that Rob, uh, Rob Arnold was saying is he wants me to draw um, one of his characters from uh, the replicator. And so that's going to be my, another one I do. But when I do inorganic stuff, you know, it, it was like, um, and I'm going to actually have to get, or get a chance to do some tech on this. But you're right. I don't do a lot of inorganic stuff. I tend to like crumbling castles and things like that. But um, when I did this and I get into tech, you know, I do do inorganic stuff. But I wouldn't call this. Uh, it's not the same thing as illustrating a mech. You know what I mean? So it's not the uh, it's not the exact sort of thing. But I want to do more machines because I do love it. And I love the perspective of it, which is fun. You know, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, we got some kaiju love here in the chat. You know how it is. Yeah, everybody's saying hello to Matthew Fowler. Absolutely. And we got to get we got to get uh, Tiger Blue to 10K. I need that. I need that this uh, this week. We got to have that happen, if not sooner. Um, let's see here. Yeah, yo yo Matt. Oh wait, sorry. The fact uh, that you aren't happy with that is so insane to me. But if it's good, always say Meyer. Yeah, it's it's a healthy kind of thing, you know. It's a healthy kind of thing. I don't. I try not to descend too much into madness, but then it's hard to descend to where you already are. Uh, what up? Absolutely, Dan and Jed. It's good to see you, my friend. Um, and uh, let's see what else we've got here. Everybody's saying their hellos. Um, and yeah, look at this, guys. It's great to see you guys here. And so, you know, when I'm working and when I'm putting this stuff together, um, I, I sometimes have to remind myself for that, which is put, you know, I want to put in some more inorganic stuff and I want to make sure that I'm always pushing my skill set as far as it can go. I guess I fell into, in some ways, a Frazetta zone. And uh, which, you know, uh, let me be clear, not saying, you know, whatever, but Frazetta didn't do a lot of tech. And I and I kind of saw that and was like, I, you know, I really want to kind of get away from that. But um, when I do illustrate the character from the replicator, that's one of the things that I want to do. And let me just make sure I find this here. Hang on a second here. Uh, let me see here. Okay, where is it? There we go. I'm looking for. Oh, wait a second. Why is that not showing up? I usually have that Indiegogo queued up um, and I don't know why I don't have it. Um, let me see here. There we go. Mutants versus machines. Yeah. There's um, the character that 
Rob wants me to, um, or suggested I draw, is um, a character that I bet you guys are hitting in the chat here. Um, hold on a second. Let me see if I can find this. Replicator 3, Replicator Remastered. That's where it is. That's where I was looking at the reference for it anyway. Um, but is the character... Or, oh, there we go. Yeah, love this character. This character is definitely something I want to draw because it's... Rob likes the way I draw monsters, and I appreciate that. Um, but he wants me to draw... Um, oh, God. Is it Goliath? I think it's Goliath is the name of the character. I can't find it. Let me know if I'm wrong on that. Um, oh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I I absolutely am excited about you know being able to get those art books out to people. They were... They were the launching pad of my Indiegogo crowdfunding, you know, comic skate, um, you know, philosophy, the way that I kind of sort of understood things. And it's funny to be doing this stuff now with a YouTube channel. Um, and uh, it's it, it's great, guys. I, I was telling my wife this morning, um, you know, we were up early this morning just doing our thing. And I was talking to her and I was like saying, you know, it's it's a very um, it's a very surreal thing because you know you have your plans and you have your things that you want to do and you want to accomplish but you take that leap off into the unknown and then it it works it's overwhelming and i've seen a lot of people feeling that this this last couple of weeks um i know that that maddie fowler was feeling it. matthew was feeling that with um with tiger blue and seeing all of the support for tiger blue and i know that um you know that 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 you know von klaus was seeing that with the support for terror in the trenches it was just smashing through all of these sort of financial um, um, stretch goals. And it was just amazing to watch. And that's what you guys make happen. And I, I sort of feel there too. So it is Goliath Stephen Rockwood drawing. So yeah, um, I want to, um, let me see if I can do this here. I want to do that, an illustration of that character. And for those of you guys who don't know, tell me if you want to see this um, piece. Let me do something with this, but I'm going to go to add to stream. Do you guys see this character right there would be Goliath. And so that's the character that Rob has suggested I do something with. And uh, there's another view of the character's head. So if I illustrate this character, I'm more than likely just going to do a full figure of it because I want to get into the technology on it. But I love stuff like that. I love that look. Um, and if you guys think that'd be cool, I think I should do a stream where I do that. And I love things like I love tanks. I love tech. I love all that stuff. My son is more of the technology guy because he does artwork in Blender. Um, but that's one of the things I'm thinking about. So let me know if you guys would, um, if that's something you guys would be interested in me doing on a stream in the future, because I do think that, um, I do think I got to do something for Rob, because I've painted one of Michael's characters. Actually, I've done, I'm working on a second one that's inspired by Michael's work. Um, but I also, you know, I feel like I haven't done anything with Rob's characters yet, and I really want to, because I think that Rob has built an incredible world and is a really great voice. Goliath, yep, yeah, says Teflon Ron. Yeah, that is sick. Isn't Goliath awesome? Um, I think it's a great character. His characters are some of the most fun characters that we've got right now. And I, I kind of would love to see, um, I don't know, I'd love to see something happen. I know he's worked uh, for John Malin uh, on The Last uh, Graveyard Shift, the uh, one of the supplemental books. But I would love to see a crossover with those those characters. I just think the aesthetic of, of them all together would be really neat. It's almost it may, would make me think of like a um, for those of you guys who remember those image comics days um, that it's funny. People think that um, that that's <laughs> all that it's about is nostalgia for those days. But it's actually a love of comics history. But um, it, to me, it would be like having um, it'd be like having, you know, Youngblood do a crossover with Wetworks by Wills. And I, I would love to see Will draw those characters. To be honest, if I could see um, Rob's characters illustrated by anybody i would love to see um wills illustrate those characters whoops let me get this camera on there a little better and we're going to zoom in just a bit there but that's that's one of the things that that i would really like to see because i love the the tech on it and wills's wet work stuff was was just awesome back in the day it was just some really cool artwork and he's got a campaign on indiegogo right now too i think if i'm not mistaken or maybe it's on kickstarter i don't know for stone the book he did with brian haberlin so yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Hit that like, guys. Yeah. Um, and yeah, absolutely. I, I do want to do that. I do want to do the um, do a, a version of that character because um, I like it. And I think it's a cool, it's a really cool character. And I might even, if I do it, um, I'm thinking 
I'm thinking uh, if I if I do it, I think I might uh, do it on uh, tone paper because uh, there's something about tone paper that I think works. At first, I was looking at it and thinking I would tackle it with acrylics and kind of do it like the old Warhammer 40K artwork that I kind of grew up on. Um, but now I'm thinking more and more that I want to do it um, as kind of more of like a gouache sort of open sketch on tone paper because I think that has a nice look to it. So we'll see. And if I do it, um, how I'll approach... Actually, you know what? I keep forgetting sometimes. Do you ever... Um, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this before. I experience it less and less, but now and again, as they say. Do you ever forget that, you know, you're you're in CG and you can just do things? I do sometimes. I do that sometimes. So um yeah, let's let's uh let's talk about what this thing could be. Let's talk about what this thing could be. So we've got uh we've got Goliath. And so let me see if I can have my Goliath reference where I can see it. Let me sketch a little bit so we can talk about what this is. Um, yeah, let's do this. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Eve six song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heart <laughs> in the blood. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So let's let's take a look at this here. Let's talk, take a look at Goliath. So Goliath. If I'm drawing Goliath. The thing I like about Goliath is that that sort of vicious, kind of lean. And the dynamic of the way that the head, the forehead is kind of like put together. I love that quality. I also love that the neck on the character is really, you know, solid. And so that's the thing for me that that is interesting. Now, the, the trick for me whenever I'm illustrating these characters is I'll start out in a, a section of the paper and I'll go, all right, what do I want to what do I want to have happen with this? So right there, I was drawing the head. And then I get up here and I go, well, that could be interesting too if the head was a little bit higher. Because I'm, but I'm not, I'm not saying that's definitely where I'm going. But when I do a creature, a big thing for me, and you could see uh, Jose Garcia do this beautifully in Tiger Blue, by the way, a hat tip, a hat tip to his work. Um, but when I think about this stuff, um, I always think about how we can get that, that intensity into this character now for me i've always got to make sure when i'm drawing and when i'm sketching trying to plan out what these things are going to look like i've always got to think about like do i need to step back so for example i'm working on this character's face because that's what i'm drawn to and but then i sort of say to myself well let me do a small thumbnail here and see what i come up with so if i make this character here and i make this character hunched over here in a smaller space does that free me up more to play around with making the weaponry on this character a little bit more ludicrous? And how fun can it be with that sort of Art Nouveau elements that you guys know I have in my stuff to play around with what the shapes are going to be right there of the ammunition going into the gun? Do you see what I mean? How important is that going to be aesthetically as opposed to working out from the portrait? And so that's one of the things, too, when I look at this kind of venomy character, you know, in terms of how it works. And then I start thinking, then how does the face play into that? And so I think when I illustrate this character, I'm going to be really trying to play with the perspective of this weaponry that we've got right here. Let me zoom this down a little bit here. Play around with the perspective of this weaponry and where the character can go. And also, I, I'm realizing that I have this, this tendency that we all have when we do these big kind of monolithic monsters to have these characters hunched over. And then I start thinking, why isn't this character doing a great scream to the heavens as he unloads all this weaponry? What happens then if I reverse the arc of this figure. Do you know what I mean? And what is this figure who's got these really great, you know, kind of like creature legs. What does it do? If I, you know, what's he standing on? You know, I mean, do I need to go full pyramid for Zed? I probably do, but, but how far can I go with the character's feet with those, those feet that this creature is going to have, you know, and how, how far am I going to go with the legs and like, how am I going to position them? 
So that's a thing that I'll do when I'm thinking about how this stuff comes together, how this works. Yeah, free and open source software. Absolutely. Let me catch up here. Oh, speaking of Blender, uh, though, I would like to see more artists embrace uh, free and open software. Absolutely. Stop propping up expensive software. You're absolutely right. Um, you remind me. Of, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's got that inglorious Rex chin. Yep, it absolutely does. It's got that just that creepy kind of alien chin. And I would love to go completely ham on that and just go nuts. Yeah, I mean, my when my uh, my son is actually working right now for a company doing his first professional uh, work, 16 now. And he's working in Blender and he's working on stuff for television. So it absolutely is um, where we're at right now in terms of this stuff. So let me zoom that out a little bit. And then I'm going to move this down just so I can show you guys a little bit of what I'm doing here. So, so here's how I'm, I'm looking at this thing. And so I start to think about, now I'm going to take a look because I've got the reference off the side here. Sorry, you guys can't see it, but I can only have so much on my screen at one time. Now I have the ability to kind of play around with how do I want to have those really cool sort of chin blades in there that come down and those great teeth. I love the teeth on this character. And if I tip the head back and he's kind of looking down at you, what does that do in terms of his intensity and how terrifying he is? And if I have that, that really great kind of circular metal panel that builds back into the back of the head, can I have this neck that he has, this great sort of long neck? can I give it more strength and play up the fact that this character is obviously a creature and it's not a person in some ways. I think a creature really lets itself be known as a creature when it stands up. Like when you see the alien in a ball in, you know, the movie alien, you're kind of like, what is that? And then as it sort of unfolds and shows off its form, it becomes far more terrifying. So I'm starting to think about like, how can I take this character and intensify what's happening with it and make it a much more, um, you know, and basically do something with it that is is going to give it a little bit more weight. And how can I really put the weight into the fact that it's one of its most unique traits um, is the fact that it's got these gigantic guns that are coming off of its arms. And that's a really fun aspect to it. So I want to make sure that when I'm illustrating this, that I'm illustrating the character um, to bring, you know, bring something interesting to it, but also to bring a little bit more of something that people can kind of keep playing off of, because you want to make sure when you're doing your version of a character that, you know, if it's got to be on model, it's got to be on model. That's great. But when you're sketching, sometimes you'll bring something to it that becomes, you know, or is something that other people brought to it that will just affirm what um, people see in the character and what people are passionate about with this character. So I want to make sure that, you know, I'm really, when I draw this character, that I'm going to make it something that is really got a nice kind of rich, powerful, raw, chest out, guns a blazing quality to it. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting excited about, at, about doing something with this character. I think this character is going to be a lot of fun to play around with, guys. Going to be so much fun. Oh, Zade, got a new arcade video dropping today. Awesome. Yo, yo, Raiden is here. Yeah, I got to say hello to everybody. Hail, Shant. Hail the chat. Hail to you, my friend. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yo, Matt. Uh, Faber-Castell should pay you the endorsement here. They probably should. Um, yo, yo, Raiden, got a new video. Oh, awesome, dude. Everybody who's not subscribed to Zade Comics, absolutely subscribe away. Uh, D&D Games, there you go. Morning, Phil. Uh, Zade, love your arcade vids. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the beat-em-ups are great. I'm editing a story time, uh, editing a story time to post a very cool Raiden radio. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's to me, that's the thing about it that, that makes all of this so fun is that we get to sketch and we get to play around and we get to see, you know, where all of these different things can go. And actually, let me do this here. Hang on a second here. I don't know who's, I don't know who's around, but I don't know. I don't know what Phil's Phil's schedule is like. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Where is it? Where is it? I know I have it here somewhere. There we go. Hang on a second. I'm going to drop. Um, I just realized I'm going to drop the invite into the Waffle Lodge green room there, which is an actual thing that exists, believe it or not. Um, and I'm just going to drop that in there. 
in case any of these waffle lodgers feel like popping in, they are welcome to pop in. And that includes you, Phil. Um, and so let's see here. Yeah, I'm editing Storytime Post. You're rating Radio Z Comics. Pops is here. Pops is in the chat. It is good to see you, my friend, again. Uh, glad to have you with us. So when I look at the the replicator thing, for those of you guys who are asking me about, you know, the um, the tech thing, I love, I enjoy creature tech, to be sure. I enjoy, um, I would say, honestly, like having a son who works in Blender and does tank and aviation 3D models, I have come to accept that there's a level of brilliance and understanding with tech that I just don't have and respect people, respect the hell out of people who do have that. And so I'm kind of, uh, it, it kind of is, it's an awesome and humbling thing about being a parent when you're, you know, your kids uh, develop skill sets that you can't imagine having. And you go, wow, this is wild. You know, like they're my kids, but they're, uh, I mean, as far as I've been told, um, <laughs> they're my kids, but I, I, uh, they, they're bringing something completely new to the table that I myself don't understand. And that's what makes it so awesome. That's what makes it so fun, you know? And, uh, for me, you know, looking at, and that's the same thing though. I would, I would say it's the same thing about being in a, a group of creative people who all do different kinds of work and we don't all do the same thing um, that everyone else can do. And uh, it makes for some really fun stuff makes for some fun work, some dynamic conversation. You know what I'm saying? It's wild. Yeah. <laughs> it always gets that man. <laughs> yeah, man, you know me, I got to have my little jokes. What are you going to do? Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, it's, it's, that's, that's the joy of this stuff. You know, we get to kind of hang out and, and, uh, we get to hang out and we get to be individuals. And I used to love, I used to love going to the comic shop and having people get into arguments about what they liked better, you know, DC or Marvel stuff. And then I also liked when, you know, image came on the scene and then people were, you know, debating and talking about image comics. And like, why is it good? Is it bad? And then Valiant and all these other publishers. And I like the idea of having choice in terms of what we talk about. And uh, that's the way it is. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. We got to keep him around. Yeah, Sean, your son can help you figure out the tech part of this character. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he just, he's super into, he just found out about this. Uh, there's this Russian tank movie called, I think it's T-34, but let me know if I got that wrong. Um, and, uh, it, we watched it the other day. And if you look at the behind the scenes, the behind the scenes stuff is done in blender. And, uh, the movie was a lot of the, all the special effects were done in blender and, and, you know, final cut and things like that. So if I do something with this character, because obviously I love my son and, uh, love my kids and anything they get interested in, um, I'm always, I'm always game for, uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things, you know, parents know what I'm talking about. I may have to have him like standing on, you know, a uh, destroyed tank or something like that. Something to bring that tech in there because I've always loved, I've always loved seeing, you know, stuff like that in illustrations, you know, just the, the wreckage of, of weaponry. And then of course, got to have some skulls in there and things like that. So when I'm, when I'm roughing this stuff in and I'm thinking about how it's going to look, those are the kinds of, those are the kinds of things that, that brings something to it. And as far as um, artists who do tech that I was influenced by, um, I did love um, the stuff in uh, the ghost in the shell manga. I always thought that was really cool. So that is a manga that, um, that I always thought had some really great designs and great aesthetic stuff. I love the artwork of Travis Sheree, which I've talked about. I'm sure um, a lot that uh, I love his stuff on um, they did for wildcats and X-Men wildcats. All that stuff is cool. Um, let me see what I got here. Whoa, let me see here. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, can can is a deceptive word here. You can do it. It's just there isn't enough time in the day. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, hey, what's up, Tommy? Good to see you. Drive by. Good morning, lovelies. Going to the sauna, so we'll listen to this later. All right, my friend. Have a good time in the sauna, Tommy. Good to see you. John, uh, too, you can have uh, you can do video editing in Blender as well. Yeah, Blender is an amazingly vast program, and I love the fact that it's open source um, for us to use. Um, I always, I was always a DC guy, never really liked Marvel, but image was truly what I grew up on spawn and, uh, Superman were the books of my childhood. And of course, parody press, I still have my old hamsters books. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So was that uh, radioactive black belt hamsters or is our adolescent radioactive black belt hamsters? I remember those books. Well, I love those. And you know, all of, that's the thing about comics people, right? We, the, every time we get together and we talk, someone will remind somebody else of a book and, 
he'll be like, oh, I got to track down and see if I can get a copy of that. <laughs> you know, I mean, the I, I think that the biggest problem that we often face is seeing so much cool stuff or remembering so much cool stuff that we've got to, uh, that we want to get, that we then want to pick up, you know. But the bigger problem I have found is when we start talking about food. Uh, because then it's just like, oh man, things go sideways really fast. All of us start feeling hungry, start passing out. Um, <laughs> it's just the way it is. And so let me see where I want to go with this. I'm probably going to have... I want to have that be turned a little bit more or do I want to have it be down? Because originally I was thinking down would be interesting for this, but we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Um, this one's a little bit easier for me to know what I'm going to do with it. Yeah, got to have fun, guys. Got to have fun with this stuff. I mean, ultimately, whenever we're doing these compositions, it's all about just getting the, the values together and figuring out where these things are going to go. I mean, the sweet science for me has always been in the composition of it. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just love, you know, the details to me are important because that's what people are, are, in my opinion, that's one of the things that people are paying you for is that immaculate reality and, or that sense of resolution. So there's the storytelling, the composition, and then there's the, you know, put me inside of that, that space as, you know, as if I was there. And that's something you can do a lot of different ways. I know people who are huge fans of, of uh, Mike Mignola's stuff know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's, it's how resolved it feels oftentimes, not how rendered it is. Um, but, you know, I was definitely more of a Bernie Wrightson um, sort of Jeff Darrow kind of guy. And uh, when I was learning in Mobius and Dave Stevens and all of those guys, so that was more how I was with my work. Yeah, this will be fun. This will be a blast, no pun intended. And I want to get his eyes a little bit more leveled and get the sharpness there in the head. That yeah, this this could this could potentially be an interesting take on the character. I don't know if this is what the actual sketch is gonna be, because I'll probably I mean to me there's not enough intensity in it. There's um I feel as though like there's a lot of aspects of it that are a little too centered for me. Like if I were to do this and I were to paint into it, I might put the head off to the side. So that he's kind of looking down this way on this side and then kind of leaning over a bit. So that might be how I do it. It's tough. It's everything I can do not to have the um, the guns up in the air and smoking. I want to have them pointed and doing things, doing damage. And I think like with this arm right here where I, I feel like I missed an opportunity on it. I want to just read this too. Shadowhawk Bax, it's good to see you, my friend. Hail and good morning. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look at all you guys coming in here, you maniacs. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's always time in the day. Just stop sleeping. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Hail Shadowhawk Facts. It is good to see you. Yeah, I mean, I love that stuff. I love the memories that we have when we get together and we talk comics. You know what I mean? It's the best stuff. Hail General Piggy. Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, the, the hunger is real. Thus says Galactus. Yeah, absolutely, man. If I tell you what, you know, when Ethan was doing those streams back in the good old days, I say that tongue in cheek, um, but when he was doing those streams where he was going for pie runs, I've never felt so hungry for pie in my life. In fact, I sort of feel like it's Saturday. I wonder if my wife and I can take a trip out to uh, to the, the roadside market that we have up here and pick up some pie. I don't know if that would be good for us in the long run, but um, but I think this arm absolutely needs to be foreshortened. Uh, in terms of um, what I want to do there, because I want it to sort of be pointing out. You know how, um, gosh, what movie was it? Uh, I can't, I, I remember action movies for things, but someone, where someone had a, like a gun and sort of looked down their arm at it, you know, like they had it out like that. And it was like kind of resting on their hip a little bit. Uh, that's, that's what I was thinking for this, like having his hand be um, up higher and then having the weapon be an extreme perspective coming straight at you i mean i love i used to love gosh guys you if, if you know if you've been to this channel before and you've heard me talk about it, i was a massive fan of mike zach's punisher and uh so i always loved the way he would do those giant room illustrations where you could see all the weaponry all of the the shells and everything like that in these like warehouses and that's the stuff that i really enjoyed 
And so what I'm thinking is having that come a little bit more directly. And then, you know, here I can sort of play around with if I want to have, you know, more stuff, depending on where I, which direction I want it to go in. But I think that this, this could be an interesting illustration. The trick with it is, is it starts to get very much, be very much a horizontal piece if I don't have that gun lined up directly at the audience. So I think I might have to do that. And then I could always do like a, a portrait of the character here in the background if I wanted to do a profile of this character. Uh, so that's something that I could play around with, but I'm going to think on that one because I really like the idea of doing an illustration of that. You know, um, let me check. I want to check back in with a couple of things. I don't know if we've moved everything here. I go, I got the giant size artist edition of my exec for Christmas. I've got that riding shotgun right over here. I've got that book and it is awesome. Seriously. How, how cool was it when you get these things and you open them up? Did you like it? Did you like how, how, uh, the, the reproductions worked? I thought they were beautiful, man. Oh, they look so good. Uh, don't forget to litter the corpse to his feet. Absolutely. There's gotta be, well, that's where the Frazetta stuff comes in as much as I was just lying earlier. Cause I got to lie sometimes folks. I've got to lie. Um, I was talking about that. I'm probably not going to do this as an acrylic. It's going to be an acrylic. This is an acrylic painting. If ever there was one, it just has to have that Frazetta Conan. I, I know how I want to paint the, the tank treads and all of the discarded blown to pieces, you know, uh, material. It's just, it's gotta happen. You know, uh, it might have been a Rambo movie. You saw those guns. And I know it's, um, but it was, I remember I will get the sequence perfectly because there was music in it and it was delivered. It wasn't a Western. This is going to piss me off, guys, until I can remember it, but it is what it is. Yeah, the Craven's Last Hunt cover looks crazy in that. Yeah, I mean, Mike Zek, what a legend. What an absolute legend. What's up, Jordan? And exactly. It's good to see you, man. It's every time you guys repost, I'm always like, oh, here's where everybody is. Um, but uh, yeah, Craven, that Craven's last hunt cover is amazing. So let's take a look here. I want to see, I want to go back and check some campaigns here. Let's see what we got. I don't know that we're moving anything, but let's let's uh see what we've got here. We're at 9805 still, guys. We we're so close. We're less than two hundred dollars away on Tiger Blue to getting that to 10 K and we need that to be a five figure young lad. I really do think that, um, that it's a project that, that just deserves, I mean, you know, just on its merits, if it's, if it's not your thing, fine, but to, you know, I get it. I totally get it, but I look at it and it's, I back it because it's the kind of book I want people to, to see. I want it to, to be something that is out there and I want to help give it life to the full extent of my ability to do so. Um, do I ever um, blend acrylics and water paints? Well, I use acrylics like water paint. So it is, you know, it's something I don't really, um, the chomp shove, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want. Um, I, I do use, I use water as the, um, as the, uh, um, to make the, the paints more, have more viscosity to them. I don't use different, um, uh, I don't use different mediums. So yeah, I mean, I use them like watercolors often when I'm sketching them up. And, um, you know, when I was working on uh, this piece, which you guys have seen, and I was just messing around with this, but I was working on this acrylic painting right here. That is uh, a piece uh, depicting Gilgamesh. And let me see if I can move this up without the camera completely falling off here. And Gilgamesh and the lion, and there's going to be a, a giant sort of scorpion or snake there that's going to be making the composition happen. Let's see if I can get that light to stop flickering. It's pissing me off. Um, but when I'm working on something like this, I'm really using it in a much more watercolor way and frankly it, it is sort of how the painting you guys know and have seen probably way too many times but the painting that you've seen me do for phil kind of came out you know what i mean it's like this started out with a very you know washy watercolory approach before it evolved into this oh yeah man i'll always share tiger blue man it's it's i listen it's i've if i'm won over by quality on something i'm won over by quality and it's a quality book you know what I mean? And I want everybody to check it out. I want everybody to see it. And if people don't like it, it's cool. But I, I want to be, I want to make sure that people are seeing, you know, these great projects. And there's a link to Tiger Blue. If you haven't checked it out yet, or if you haven't backed it yet, um, go take a look at it. It's, it's, it's such a great book. And I think that its success is going to be very good for showing people all the awesome things that we're doing here, all of the great work we're doing here. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting it. I think the artwork is beautiful, but I'm, I really am I'm thrilled to have supported it. I love the pitch. Uh, this 52-page ultimate action comic is Enter the Dragon meets the Island of Dr. Moreau. What a great pitch. 
seriously, Matthew Fowler, that is a great pitch. And uh, I, I, I think it's great. I know exactly what you're talking about when you say that. It's, it's puts a, a picture of the book in my head, and uh, the artwork definitely backs all that stuff up. So I'm going to see if I can kind of add a little bit more there, and then we'll have going down the arm. We're going to get that gun up close, and that's going to start to work for me. Cool. And we'll see how we get that going. And I want to have, yeah, I want to have this stuff happening here. <laughs> I want this piece to be interesting. That's why I'm going to have to do it in acrylic because there's just too many moving parts. And so for me anyway, there's a certain level of of how I work on my own stuff how versus how I work on other people's stuff that dictates what media I use. And so when I'm doing, you know, apes and gorillas and things like that, it makes sense for me to work in um, gouache because that's how I do all of my stuff in that regard. But when I'm doing something that's different. So for example, I did a painting not long ago of, um, of uh, Cad Bane crossed with um, <clears throat> Charles Bronson. If you're wondering what that looks like, um, here you go. So this was my uh, Cad Bane crossed with Charles Bronson painting I did a while back. And the fun thing about it was, is if you look at how I'm handling the acrylics down here, I'm just letting them run and using the water to kind of push it around and give it this kind of watercolory feel. And that's the thing that you can get the depth and the opacity into the eyes, but then you can also give it this kind of weathered texture, like, uh, you know, rust stained metal uh, happening. Let's see if I can make that work. The light's just too, too fussy right now. Um, but the light, you know, sort of rust and metal kind of quality and it all happens. You know what I mean? Um, cat vein. <laughs> oh my God. Gotta love it. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. It's like, so when I'm working, I mean, my general, my general attitude, cat vein, no, it's cat bane, but close. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Yeah. Tiger blue uh, should have a black and white version for those who already got black and white and consider doing color version. Yeah. I think, I think there's a reasonable, you know, there's a reasonable case and it's like, if we have stretch goals, right. It's like, you know, that's what they're for. Um, yeah, I, I just love the I, I love Once Upon a Time in the West for those of you guys um, who, who follow the channel regularly and, and know me well, know me better than I know myself on some levels. Um, that's a huge thing for me. You know, it's uh, let's see here. Uh, currently drawing Goliath does make complete sense to me. Uh, currently, you're drawing Goliath doesn't make complete sense to me. I can see the vision, but uh, I know I can't see the vision, but I know it will. Yeah, this this right here is um, I'll, OK. Let me show you what I mean here. Let's have some fun here, as Bob Ross would say, the late, great Bob Ross. All right. So I'm going to show you how um, how I get this stuff to, to kind of make sense for me. But it's going to be a little weird at first and it may take a few seconds. And I'm not saying it's going to work. We'll find out in a second if it's going to work, but you never know. I know. <laughs> I know, I know. Don't worry. We're going to get through this. <laughs> trust me <laughs> trust me we're gonna get through this guys i know it's it's uh it's terrifying at first but uh it's not what you think it is so let me show you what we just did uh, I want you guys to keep an eye on this painting right now hey what's up Lou Flake? good to see you my friend and happy Saturday to you as well um, I want you to watch what's going to happen here with this paint. All right. I want you guys to trust me. <laughs> Do art. It's all right. We're fine, man. Don't worry. Um, I want you to watch what's going to happen with this paint. You're going to see a color shift happen. Big black door cover variant. <laughs> That's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. You get, we're going to see what is going to happen with this piece 
because of what we've done right there. All right. So what I want to do is, and because of the way that gouache works and the way that these paints work, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a value that will shift and absorb while still leaving elements that I like. Yeah, trust the process, gentlemen. Uh, I love that. Uh, <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Um, uh, make something better than I ever really like than dumb sink on it. No, it's not. I guess it's going to be all right. Chillax. Uh, trust the process, gentlemen. That's one of my former students who's like, ah, I've seen him do this before. Uh, Man Shaker D. Schneek. It's going to be all right, guys. It's going to be all right. So this is this is how we roll. This is how we do things, okay? I've got myself a middle value right there. Now I can still see elements of the character in there. I can actually see all the elements I need to see. So what I need to start thinking about is the explosive nature of this character and how I want to best represent that. And how I want to represent that is, is I want to think about this character silhouetted Hat tip to Phil Diaz, by the way. Silhouetted by the paint, by the fire, by the warmth. And if this character is going to be in silhouette, then I got to make sure by bright light in a dark environment, then I've got to make sure that I start with that dark element, that dark environment. And so that right there is an essential part of making this come together. Now, can you guys start to see when you look at this? Um, <laughs> and you know what Anna says about gingers. Um, so although I've got nothing but love for the ginger people, if you're out there, people of ginger, we love you. Um, but let's take a look at this. Do you guys start to see the figure happening? Do you guys see what we're talking about here? Um, it's... Uh, this right here is how we're going to start to make this character come alive. We're going to start to drop in those highlights and pick out that silhouette of this character. Because I can still see everything I need to see inside of this. And you guys can probably see that a little bit here in terms of the way that the, um, you know, the paint is drawing. Can you start to see like what we're doing with this character here? I'll move this in just a little bit closer. There we go. I'm trying to paint my uh, mic there, but it does happen. And so then I start to deal with all of the things that are going to help to bring this character out. So I'll start dropping in with some highlights right there to build out the mass of this figure. Start to make that a little bit stronger. And then start to hit those highlights. Get that bicep kind of moving in there a little bit. There we go. And then I'm gonna to wanna to get a little bit more warmth going down on that arm right there as he's uh, kind of getting some, maybe some light right there on the arm, but also just you know, a little bit of color theory nonsense there to make it work for me. Here we go. I'll start to build that out a little bit. And then I have to decide like how I want, you know, the leg to be in terms of its lighting. Right there. Do you guys see what I mean? See how we're starting to make this thing better than 
the sort of uh, the timid nature of what goes on in the line sketch. We start to be able to pick and choose where our highlights are. And if I want, which I do, I want that fire. I want that hot fire, like fire this morning. Uh, I don't think it works as well. Like fire this morning doesn't work nearly as well as like fire tonight. But I want that fire to be on the ground level and tapering as it goes up so that we can kind of define the power of this character as it kind of sits there. I, I, I have comics constantly in my head, okay? I, I love comics. And and I'm not saying I think it, I don't think it's the greatest comic since sliced bread. I just remember reading it. Um, and, and, and I, I think it's, I don't, I don't want to get into it too much, but anyway, I remember in the Watchmen where it says, what happened to the American dream? And the comedian says in the Watchmen, uh, it came true. You're looking at it. That's the phrase. That's the moment that I think he is, is th this character is distilling in this moment for me. It's, it's just a, a moment of power and, uh, it's a moment of, um, you know, it's a moment of uh, just intensity in uh, the craziness. And this allows me to start thinking about, you know, when people were talking about, oh, are they going to be, you know, carnage and so like that? Yeah, you bet. I've got that fire there. So I've got that silhouette for that hand that's going to be. There we go. Let's move this down. Sorry, guys. This camera is hanging on for dear life. There you go. But we've got uh, this hand that's reaching up right here. Maybe we have a, a skeletal sort of figure looking down right there. And then we're going to have... I'm pretty sure this isn't the kind of thing that Bob Ross painted when he talked in this voice. So I apologize if any of you guys are having a uh, <laughs> disconnect uh, from... Uh, from what I'm painting versus how I'm sounding. But then we start to play around with, um, to get that a little bit lighter. And we start to play around with those tank treads I wanted to have there, catching a light. Kind of overturned right there. We will have a little bit of a, a highlight there a little bit of a highlight there and we'll just let that kind of maybe go back a little bit there we go and then i want to have let's see what else we can do here so i figured out what that's going to be i just like that shape there we go. There we are. Do you guys see how we're starting to put this thing together? Hail Rick Sailor. Good to see you, my friend. Absolutely great to see you. Um, Bob Ross does carnage. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You just need a happy little bush. Yeah, I had a happy little brush fire, I think. Uh, and the Bob Ross tribute would be complete. Uh, let's see here. I was never able to interact with Bob. This is <laughs> that's true. It's absolutely true. Bob didn't stream as much as he should have. Or it was very uh, solo stream. That's how it works. What is this? Oh my stars! Just, this just in. Speak of the devil. Did you guys hear the lovely Mrs. and Jetty just come in here? By the way, I cannot hold on a second. Hold on a second, folks. We interrupt this painting stream. You cannot make this stuff up, guys. You cannot make this stuff up, folks. We gotta pause for a second. We gotta do a union pause here for a minute here. I have just received a package. Honey, what's in the what's in the box? Ah uh, what's in the box? All right, let's see what we got in this box, y'all. Are you ready to see what's in the box? Can we all say hi and oh yes, ha hello and Mrs. Jetty, happy belated birthday. People are saying yeah, everybody give uh, give Mrs. Jetty a 
God bless her. She deserves it. She is Comicsgate through and through, and she is supporting all this stuff, guys. Can you say hi, Comicsgate, for me, honey? Hi, Comicsgate. Look at that, folks. Thank you. How did I luck out, folks? How did I luck out, folks? Did you hear that? My stars and garters. I know. <laughs> she said, calm down. This is what I just got in the mail, folks. This is what I got in the mail. Earthbound by Narwhal. Let's do this. Let's open up this bad boy. I have been waiting for this. You, can, I swear sometimes if you guys... I'm starting to like tell you... I, I, I will tell you this. I sometimes feel as though if the universe is directing us to do things and uh, has an ama amazing plan. And this is what we've got, folks. We've got my copy. I'm so excited. I just got my first copies of Earthbound 1 and 2. Thank you, Narwhal. Thank you, Pearberg. Thank you, my artist brother. This, I am so stinking excited about this, guys. <laughs> I am so excited. I have been waiting to see these books because I, I got to the party, you know, late. And, uh, Nosferatu. Look at this, guys. What a Saturday. What a Saturday. This is awesome. I am so excited. Narwhal Mafia. Never forget. This is so cool. Oh, man. Look at this stuff. How cool is this? I know. The books smell great. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cam view sucks. Sorry. Let me move this up, guys. Let's see if we can make this happen there. And I'm going to adjust this. And then here we go. So here are Earthbound 1 and 2, officially added to my Comicsgate library. And these are beautifully made. Beautiful square bound. The stock is beautiful. The reproduction quality on this is great. Look at this color theory. Man. Oh, Narwhal, man. You're killing it. This is wild. Art inspiration, guys. If, if people want to know why I'm here, I am here because I get to be inspired by my fellow artists and I get to be inspired by people who back art. I, if you guys didn't back this book, awesome. Awesome. I totally understand. That's cool. It's, I'm no big deal whatsoever. However, I do want to say that... Um, I love that I have the option to back this book. Do you know what I mean? It's it's so amazing to me. And I need, when you guys back these books and make it pos possible for these books to exist, what is so exciting to me is I want you to know it's, it's like a shot of adrenaline for me to get these books in the mail. I had a dream two nights ago that um, I, I had finished the last page of Nosfera, which I've got a little ways to go and was getting ready to bring it into InDesign. And I was so excited. And I was like, "This is let's do this, let's blah, blah, blah. And I woke up so charged to do work. When you're dreaming about fulfillment, then you understand what Comics Gate's all about. And so fulfillment is about that moment right there that you guys just witnessed. That moment where somebody who's back the book and is so excited to get it, gets to open up that package and see that book. Live on air, guys. I love it. I, this you could not have you could not have planned this. I I did not know I was going to be talking about to about Narwhal today. Yes, this is so awesome. Uh, I'm so glad I could share that with you guys. So fun, man. Ah, I love Comics Gate. It's so much fun. And Narwhal, thank you for getting those off to me. I was it was a pleasure to back that book, um, and I'm so excited um, for for. Nosferatu, I'm ready to rock and roll back in that as well. Um, so cool. So yeah, sorry to interrupt. I, it just totally threw me uh, in the best sense um, <laughs> to get that in the mail, man. That is some awesome stuff. Heck yeah. All right, so let me move this here so I can get my reference back and try to get my 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 legs back under me. But that was cool. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's that's 
that's why I'm here. You know, that's what I love about being here. And uh, now I get to play around with this character who I love. I love the angle of the way this character's uh, jaw is set up. It's a really cool design. And I like being able to kind of build out the intensity of this character as we kind of, you know, figure out how it's going to work. It's just got this really awesome... I love the teeth, too. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with the face because it's a little bit... It's a little bit too much minutia for this stage of the game, but I just want to rough that in a little bit just so I can keep it in my mind. And I'll do the exact same thing that you guys saw me do earlier where it's like I will knock that whole thing back because it still has to be in silhouette. I just want to feel the impression of it. Do you see what we just did there? That was just some white gel pen, how we gave ourselves the impression of that in silhouette. And that's that's the fun thing about it, you know? Yeah, so good when a plan comes together, says Teflon Ron. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I need a cigar and I need, you know, Hannibal to be here with me because um, it was so good. When you're working on this, are you thinking um, from dark to light? Uh, I'm actually just thinking about, uh, I'm thinking about dark and light. So when I'm doing my own stuff, I, I always just pick when I flip a coin and I knew I needed uh, fire. When I, whenever I know the subject matter is going to be light, I always think I got to go dark because your environment and your background is what offsets the subject that's the most important thing. So um, for this, because the subject was light, I wanted to emphasize it and hit it hard with dark. You're absolutely right, Matthew Fowler. You know what's going to be awesome? When I get my copy of Tiger Blue, which I know is going to be a freaking stunner. And I'm so, uh, I listen, I want to see Tiger Blue hit 10K, but I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm so proud of you guys and what you've done on that book. And I am proud to be standing shoulder to shoulder with you guys making artwork in Comic Skate. It's awesome. Yeah, I got those Narwhal books, guys. Seriously. Um, it's ch check them out, guys. Check them out. You know, look, it's it's one of those things. So, yeah, um, plan. Uh, yeah, I planned that Narwhal moment uh, and Mrs. And Jetty was in on it, you know. Hey, what's up, leg kick? There you go. It's good to see you, my friend. I just I sort of missed that. But yeah, I mean, that was that was a beautiful moment. And uh, never forget the missus saying hello to you guys uh, and saying thank you, which I appreciate, guys. She's a good woman and she's uh, she's a great support system. And uh, much love. Much love. And uh, and I love you guys, too, for supporting us and for for always saying hi to her and uh, and being the cool folks that you are and wishing her a happy birthday. Never lost on me. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, we're gonna have some fun with this. But I'm thinking about like how do I build that kind of that intensity up? And, and in a lot of ways, what I'm doing here is is very much an additive and subtractive process. So sometimes uh, I'm going from dark to light, sometimes I'm going from light to dark. More often than not, if I'm if I'm being honest, um, I'm going from middle values in either direction. That's why I love to work off of um, that's why I love to work off of, uh, toned paper and a middle ground because it starts you off that way. If I could get some stone, pa uh, some toned paper with the, the quality of the Strathmore, um, the Strathmore, uh, Gemini watercolor paper, like if I could, you know, get that toned, um, I don't know if it would be, you know, if it would be a, a you know, an ideal paper, but it could potentially be, but, uh, I could always, you know, tone the paper myself if I really needed to. Um, but it's, it's, I, I love working on, you know, the, a middle ground with value because I think that, um, it, it allows you to kind of get the hard work of, of, uh, you know, getting your middle values in there, which are some of the hardest to establish out of the way. And yeah, this is going to be fun. And it's funny too, because whether I'm painting tech or if I'm painting architecture, or I'm painting anything, um, you know, the, the ultimate thing is to create that something that is aesthetic that sort of you know speaks to you and i still the thing that gets me excited about artwork and and back in all of these different cg campaigns um is the fact that um i see so many people doing and trying different things all to get the aesthetics to to resonate with people and what is what is better than that hey what's up mrs good stuff it's good to see you i hope you're having a great morning and thank you for all of your support Imagine uh, this is like the artist working on animated Batman. I think that's um, the one they would, I'm sorry. I think that's the one they would draw on the um, black backgrounds. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're so right about that. 
Um, and it's so great to see you guys, you know, um, this fine morning, you know, Rick Saylor, always good to see you, my friend. Um, and yeah, guys, I mean, so when I'm doing this stuff, I'm thinking about, I'm not just thinking about like the, the, um, the physical part of it, although like the, I mean, the, uh, the rendering out of, oh, here's where an ellipse will go, which is a part of it. And, you know, I, everybody's got a different sort of way, but for me, the way that I have to do it is I have to think about it from the standpoint of, you know, Oh, here's where, here's where the light is going to be hitting this. Here's the angle that this is going to be at. And here's where the, um, the ellipses are going to be that are going to make the tech have its, it's kind of more believable quality to it. And where do I want to make, um, where do I want to make the, um, the eye go when you guys are reading this piece and how do I, the rule of cool. That's another really important thing. You know, the rule of cool, making sure it looks cool um, for, for the person who created it, for the person who, um, you know, is, uh, is backing the book uh, that they get this and they don't say, Oh man, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I love this character. <laughs> Sean, thanks for, thanks for ruining it. You know, you, you want to make sure that, that people like your take on it, you know, and like what you're, what you're bringing to the table. And so as I start to think about like, okay, that gun's going to be in perspective and maybe that hand is going to be resting up there. That gives me a little bit more of a sense of um, what, you know, what this thing's going to be about so that when I get to the point to where that arm, which is going to be a little bit more extended. And then I get to really show the distance that we're talking about with this weapon right here. I can really make it look great. And what I'll probably do is um, whenever I'm doing guns, I always will go on to um, always go on to YouTube and watch people firing guns in ultra slow motion. So I can get a sense of like how they're, how they're working or how to get that energy in there. And so this is one of those examples of how I do this stuff. Yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely right. You know, and it's, um, let me see if I can find, there we go. And so this weapon has got a very particular, um, particular structure to it. And uh, it's got, it's got room for me to have a little bit of a darker area right there. And then it's going to, thin out and then that's going to go to right about there let's see how that works and then i'm so I'm in my mind right now guys for those of you guys who i, I never played the game i just painted the miniatures because my buddy played the game um but uh for those of you guys who know Warhammer 40 K artwork from the eighties and things like that, that's exactly what I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> that's exactly where my head is as I'm working on this stuff. And then there we go. And then we get to have the way that this is hooked onto his hand is actually really cool. It's kind of, his hand is sort of freed. And so I like the idea of having that hand being sort of freed and, and it's full glorious monstrous uh monstrous po monstrous monstrous <laughs> posture Whew. i gotta i gotta master that english language at some point uh you'd think i'd be able to speak it um but yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be a really fun aspect of this is to kind of get that that sort of uh the hands are huge for this thing. Like it's obviously the character has got huge hands, but more importantly than that, it's the fact that they're, they're kind of freewheeling when he's using this weapon. So I can actually have his hand kind of open and, you know, pointing out at people as he's, you know, using these things, which makes for a really fun visual image. I think I got to move that up just a little bit. There we go. There we are. And then that's where I can have, the um, ammunition sort of be in terms of for its design. There we go. There we go. Have that coming around. 
So you got to listen to my boy, Bleached Heart, man. He's a former student of mine. Don't need to ever fret when I paint over things like that. Um, preciousness and, well, actually, let's quote a movie that, let's quote a movie that's uh, more spiritual in nature. Uh, fear causes hesitation. And hesitation will cause your worst fears to come true. Point break, folks. The Tao of Patrick Swayze. That and the be nice until it's time to not be nice. Roadhouse. All right. So let's see. We got a really cool plus. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I know. It reminds me of Death Dealer. Ab perfect. Perfect understanding. I wasn't even thinking about that, but you absolutely nailed what this is. Like what the essence of this aesthetic is. This might be more craftsman than artisan, but do you uh, um, ever when finished reverse the process in your head to find inefficiencies? Never. I never do because it's a non-intellectual process for me. Um, I do that with, um, I do that with other things. I do that with story. I do that with graphic design a little bit, but never when I'm painting, it's the only way I can keep the life in it is to move forward and then run at it again. Um, isn't Bancroft's rule of fun that it takes place at a properly scheduled time? <laughs> that's all, that's dark. Yeah, absolutely. John, that would be cool. But you guys are you guys can run it back. That's the cool thing. You can watch it in reverse, and that's the fun thing. Roadhouse. I love guys. I referenced Roadhouse in the first comic I published in two thousand and uh, or two thousand <laughs> when I was fourteen years old. Not two thousand fourteen. When I was fourteen years old, I did reference Roadhouse. I loved that movie. And uh, am I selling this? Uh, I don't know. It depends on if somebody's buying this. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the best answer. Uh, you know, it's uh, DMs are the, the key to getting this stuff. I had somebody I was going to, I posted on Instagram once I was going to throw out a tracing paper sketch I did for my book. And this other artist um, who follows me and supports my work uh, was like, I will buy it for a hundred dollars. <laughs> Please don't throw it in the trash which was really funny. So yeah, that you, a lot of my process work is saved by, uh, by fans watching the stuff and going, please don't throw that away. I beg you, please don't put that in the trash. Um, but you know, so yeah, that's my answer to that. You know, that is my answer to that. Uh, let's see here. Roadhouse. Yeah. Paint don't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> pain don't hurt. Yeah. I, I just read that paint don't hurt. I need a t-shirt that says that. Yeah. Pain don't hurt when you get stitched up. Always remember that. Um, I was obsessed with that movie as a kid. Well, then I'm still must. I'm totally obsessed with it to this day. Uh, Roundhouse, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there was definitely some Roundhouse in that, um, and some throat ripping out. You know the standards. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I will tell you what. That movie had left a massive impact on me. I love that movie. I love the music in it too. The music's great. It's got a great soundtrack. Here we go. Let's let's really drop some contrast in there for this. Let's really make that the fire quality of that really get, you know, get intense. Just so we can bring that out just a little bit more. We can always knock these things back if we need to, but I would say sometimes it's it's worth it when I'm working to just push things as far as I can conceive of them going. And I also want to make sure that uh, I play around with things like just even at this early stage, like the idea of like there being like little embers and things floating. Do you know what I mean? In this world where this character is getting it done. And, uh, you know, it's a higher tech world in so many ways. It's a little bit more ghost in the shell than it is, um, you know, um, T-34, you know, or World of Tanks. But I'll find my, you know, I'll always find, try to find my way in on a, on a piece like this, you know, and try to figure out where I'm, where I'm going with it. Let's see here. Um, <laughs> and, oh, I've done that. I've already done that a billion times. I've, I've torn my artwork up before just to kind of prove a point because <laughs> I can be that way sometimes. You tell me what, I'll tell you who. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Uh, yeah, sometimes you got to do it. Um, that's what I thought he was doing with uh, the black overwash thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the thing, though, too, which is um, bringing it back and knocking it out um, and sort of seeing where it can go. 
I've done that with um, paintings that you will see in Nosferu where I, it wasn't working for me and I just nuked the whole thing and then reworked it. And it turned out to be something that was better than it was when I first had it. And when I was being too precious about it, you guys will always get when you back my books and you support Nosferu and you support Shant and Jetty art. And that's because that goes for the art books too. You will always get my best and nothing less. And I think that's true for CG as well. Um, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not getting up in the morning and going to my, my board to draw or streaming for that matter, to give you guys less than a hundred percent. Um, that might un be the unfortunate reality of, of, you know, my best efforts might not be the greatest, you know, in terms of a stream or anything else. But when we were sitting here and we were talking about, yeah, I'm thinking about doing a painting of this character. I thought, why don't, why don't you guys get invited to watch my thought process of trying to come up with something and it, it may go sideways. It may not work, you know, but I, I, it'll be honest. It'll be, it'll be, uh, just like the book, you know, it'll be, it'll be my honest best effort and it will be, um, I'm not here to, to tell you guys things and, uh, not back them up with work. And so we'll, we'll see where it goes. Do you guys see how this is starting to come together though? Does this make sense a little bit? You know, it's like um, we're starting to slowly, we'll start to slowly get that kind of that intensity of this character and that, you know, that, um, that quality that makes it, you know, makes the replicator such an awesome, you know, cool and intense sort of world for us as we're looking at it. And I'll try to, what I always try to do is I'll try to free up, you know, the space in this work to where I can kind of say, all right, well, I have some room to move over here with this. So maybe I'll, I'll move it in this direction, or maybe I'll try moving it, you know, in this other direction right here, just to make sure that it has the proper intensity that it needs to have. Um, because it, it really, it, it, all that matters is the finished piece. You know, when people see the finished piece, they got to they got to feel like it's great. It doesn't matter how much, you know, struggle is involved in it. You got to make sure that it's something that, uh, that they get and they're, they're satisfied with. Here we go. Here we are. That's starting to kind of do something. There we have it. So yeah, I think this could be interesting. We'll see where we go with it. You know? Uh, yes, it's making more sense. Awesome. Um, uh, I like the embers. Awesome. I'm glad to hear here. Like them, Jordan. It's, it's all a part of it. Cool. Making sense. Looking good. The embers and the smoke really cool. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, those are things I watch movies and read comics and, and do all the same. We do all the same stuff in that regard. You know, we, we grow up on all this stuff and we love it. And we know when we see something that is, there's these like little things that we like uh, embers in a fire and, you know, buildings that are kind of like falling down and and all that kind of stuff to where it it adds this level of cool and interest to the work and if our job if we don't see our job as being to create that that sense of interest you know for the audience then we're, we're going to miss out we're not going to get what we the most we can get out of our work so i'm always sort of trying to create something that people are going to look at and think, all oh, right, well, I, that's something I want to see. Like, I want to see where this goes from here. Or they're going to look at it and say, you know, I don't know if I need to see you paint, <laughs> paint Goliath ever again. You never know, you know, but it's, it's, you have to, you have to, you know, you won't get a hit if you don't take a swing. It's absolutely true. Um, and uh, you got to try to dare to, to do something that is interesting every single time you, you, step up to make artwork and every page of Nosferu is about that. And every time I do a head sketch, you know, for somebody um, it's funny. It's like people wonder, you know, what goes into those head sketches, everything I got. That's how that works. There we are. There we go. We're starting to, we're starting to, I'm starting to feel as though this is a very, this is the thing that's hard for me to describe guys. Oh, thanks Phil. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. It's, it's coming together, you know, um, Rob is going to see this and be very pleased. I hope so. I hope Rob likes it. He's one of my brothers. I love that guy to bits. He's true blue. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, 
loves comics gate man and and he's been really kind to me and and super supportive and super nice and uh yeah i appreciate that stuff that stuff's never lost on me um and uh yeah so let's see here get this and so was ethan for that matter too and he's obviously not far from my thoughts um john and and uh, rob arnold john malin and rob arnold uh came on here for one of my first uh uh, for one of my streams and when I, they said, Hey, look, you got to start having guests on and start, you know, doing things like that. And I was kind of like, yeah, I'm planning on figuring that out. And he's like, <laughs> John was like, yeah, no time. Like right now, send us the link. <laughs> and, uh, that's what, that's how, that's how you get places and that's how you move things forward. And, uh, Rob, if I ever have a question or anything about shipping or any of that stuff, I know I can count on Rob. Um, and Michael to help out and uh, to be there. And I've got good people around me. That's a nice feeling to have. I'll tell you that. And so I hope, yeah, I hope Rob, uh, Rob thinks this is interesting when he sees it, you know. Let me see here. There we go. Let's just rough this in. Sometimes I'm working, I forget how small this sketch is. I'm like, why can't I get that exact line I'm looking for? And like, oh, it's like only an inch tall. So it's crazy that way. There we go. Now we're going to get that arm in there. And then we're going to get those kind of nice, creepy kind of hands and fingers in there. Because I love this character. I love the creature nature of this character. There we go. And then let me do... A little bit of, I want to define the end of that a little bit. Here we go. I'll knock that back a little bit once I get to that point, but. There we go. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's coach being coach is absolutely right. Coach is going to coach. Coach being coach. Yeah, because this stuff this stuff matters, and it's not just a game, you know, to him, and it's not for for a lot of us, you know, and for most of us, I think we realize like how much work it's taken to get to the point to where people know that they can go and back these projects on Indiegogo. People know, you know, that that's you know why we're there. People know, um, you know, what it means to back one of our books and what you know that that Comics Gate is seen as a thing by at least enough people that's about making things as opposed to about, you know, whatever they want to label us as. And I love that aspect of it. And that's the thing that I'm most, uh, most excited for is that work to get here that so many people have put their time and energy into, including you guys getting out the word about everything and back in all these books. It's, it's it will never be lost on me guys. Always going to be appreciative. As, as is my wife and as is my family. So yeah, as this thing comes together, guys, I think we're, we're, we're getting there. You know, you're kind of getting a sense, a little bit of a sense of where it can go. Yeah. Rob is a good dude. Shame about his hair. Well, listen, you know, it happens to us all hair in comics gate is, you know, hair today, gone tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Coach being coach. Hail Zaid. Yeah. Hail Phil. Um, did we, uh, well, did we just hear the bunny rabbit? Thumb? No, not yet, but I'm sure that will happen at some point, you know, absolutely. All right, gang. So we're at two hours and 13 minutes, and I've got to get something to eat because I'm about ready to pass out. I'm at take me drunk. I'm home level here. So um, we're going to wrap up here, but I just will say this, guys. Thank you guys for being here. Check it. Please check out Tiger Blue if you haven't yet. Please check out, um, you know, oh gosh, uh, Terror in the Trenches. Please check out The Lost Pages 2, Phil's book, uh, which is out there right now. Mo Biggs, what's up, brother? It's good to see you, my friend. Um, and hail to you, hail to you this fine Saturday. And, uh, I want you guys to know that, uh, it's always fun streaming with you guys. I'm going to try to do this stuff more regularly. If you want to see me do artwork, uh, on streams and things like that, I'll be doing it. It'll all be happening. And sometimes things will happen that we do that we didn't see coming like this. This happened because of you guys. And the fact that I just received my copies of earthbound one and two on stream, which is awesome. Uh, thank you, my brother. It's good to see you, Seth, you know, keep your nose clean and keep making stuff happen. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Thank you so, so much for being here. Bow indeed. Uh, I will catch you guys soon, I promise. Uh, allow me to send you out with uh, 
one of my favorites uh, that goes out to my crew here. You know who you are. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace and stay gold, guys. Here's a little something for you busters. Yeah. You're not even learning anything on this beat. Yeah. You think I'm stupid, son. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say to you, boy? Yeah. Do you? What's up with that? Look at me, do it. Y'all cowards don't even smoke crap. What's up with that? You smoke crack, don't you? Y'all cowards don't even smoke crack. Look at me, boy. Hey to you. you smoke crack, don't you? Don't even smoke crack. Do you know what that does to you? Huh? You smoke crack, don't you? Smoke crack. Go on and do it expeditiously. What's up with that? It kills your brain cells, son. It kills your brain cells. Don't even smoke crack. Huh? I apologize, I forgot you were there. You may go now.